Don't boom boom a boom don't boom. Come on, come on, we gotta make it big, baby. What's going on? It's your boy Wayne Breezy. And listen, today is shoot the breeze. That means you guys get to call in. We're gonna talk 49ers. We're gonna talk about just getting paid because it's Friday night, baby. And it's a couple of more days to San Francisco dominates the Arizona Cardinals over in Mexico. Yes, I'm getting ready to get on an airplane, but for right now, we're gonna bring it on the Wayne Breezy show. Breezy this, breezy that They know I'm gold-blooded I got the Niners on my back, you know And yeah. Breezy this, breezy that Ain't nobody working like breezy and that's a fact Over motivated is an understatement Gold blooded to the core, got your squad hating Breezy make it look easy Breezy on everything like 05067 Wheezy This is not a game Yeah we faithful in every way And even though we on the east coast Very loyal to the bay Heavy red and gold every day And if you really a Niner fan I know you can relate Applying pressure with this content Like smaller bear We not accepting no slander by Trey So beware I stay in exclusively Niner hats And I always tell the truth This exclusively Niner facts Breezy this, breezy that They know I'm gold blooded I got the Niners on my back, you know Yeah Breezy this, breezy that. They know I'm gold blooded. Got the Niners on my back, you know. Shout out to my man Lake City Fresh. <laughs> hey, check it out. You can get the full version of that song right on all of your available musical platforms, right? So Apple Music, Spotify, Google Play. Make sure down below you can see it's popping right there. Go ahead, download it, stream it, buy it, flip it, touch it, work it, make it. Make it happen, bro, because it's a breezy this, breezy that type of morning. Shout out to everybody. What's going on, everybody out there? I see you guys in the chat. Y'all in here early. Jacqueline in the building early. That's what I'm talking about. First person in the building. I'm going to start doing something for the first person in the building. That's what I'm going to start doing. You ain't got a hashtag a CC. I don't even still know what that means. But the first person in the building every episode is going to get a little something special. I'm going to see you on Fridays. On I can't do it every day. Y'all, y'all, y'all crazy. But on Fridays, we're going to do something special for the first person that is in the chat ready to go. Shout out to Jacqueline. Give her the fall for one time. Roddy, I see you in the building. Bryant, you in the building. Demarcus, Tara Dome in the building. Woke Niner recaps is in the building. My man, El Amin, is in the building. Lake, let's go. Leroy, 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 Leroy. I, mute, I, I immediately just think of Last Dragon. Look, I'm so excited because Chrissy, 1687 in the building. Coach Crew, Scott Hill, Ro, Ro, Roy, boy in the building what's going on look, look i'm super excited now i get i get yelled at in the comment section not here but if you go and read some of the comments breezy it's too much stuff going on at the beginning of the show and i was like well i can explain it to you uh but you wouldn't understand again make sure you go ahead and cop that song all right youtube like comment subscribe make sure you guys go ahead and do that listen the memberships are going to be back very i don't know if they're back right now you guys can click on the button to become a member if you can do it now become a member right exclusive perks you know we back there's only one level so you don't have to be like you know differentiated we're just gonna do one level we're gonna keep it simple stupid one level bam boom you'll get exclusive perks every month uh being a part or a member of the wayne breezy channel so make sure you guys go ahead and do that but there it is right there below on the bottom of the screen all right at the wayne breezy all right make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe apple podcast the show is going to be there spotify as well make sure you check out the wayne breezy show something new and don't forget to join the patreon because the giveaway is about to be something special now if you're not already a member of the patreon don't worry become one it's only gonna cost you five dollars right now when you become a member that's when the contest starts for you right if you the most the member that gets the most people memberships now for the for up until what december 2nd i believe that's the date that's going to be all right we'll win two free tickets to the miami dolphins game with your boy breezy give me a round of applause and give miss cynthia a round of applause 
Cinnamon Kiss, you the real MVP right here. She's like, Breezy, I want to help you grow the Patreon. Here's some money. I was like, you know what we're going to do with the money? Let's get them tickets. They can rock with us at the game. Bingo. Ding, ding, ding. All right. So that's what we're going to be doing for the Patreon. So if you're a Patreon, get on over there. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe. And check out the newest episode of the Red Light Special. It's super crazy. Today's fun because I got my brother from another mother all the way across from... It's going to take a while to get there, but it doesn't matter because he's live, he's kicking, and his show is pumping. Let's Talk Sports is out there. He's doing a bunch of other podcasts. I love what he's doing out there. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for the one and only, my brother, Paul Hope. Let's go. What's good, playboy? Hey, what's up, Breezy? I'm not in the future. I'm just in the UK, which is about <laughs> 5,000 miles away from Levi's. But thanks for having me on, buddy. What time is it over there? It is four o'clock in the afternoon. So I am in the future compared so you're to in you. in the future. There's no way to get around that. It's always cool talking to somebody that saw something that already happened. I feel like we're in a real live movie right now. No, I appreciate you having me on. Like you said, let's talk sport. You've become a big part of that. And it was nice for us to be able to give back with the jersey giveaway recently to help you grow that your channel. So it feels weird, Breezy, not being in the chat because I'm normally <laughs> in the chat. So I'm seeing all the comments from everybody and I'm like, God, there's my guys there. I'm normally in the chat with them guys. So hi, everyone. Everybody's saying it. hello, Mark. This is what I love. It's the one thing I love about this show. Uh, the community is super strong, man, and they take care of you. You know what I'm saying? And so shout out to everybody in the community, man. And Paul, thank you for being on here because it's really cool to get your perspective on what's going on in the 49ers world. You were just on uh, the 49ers supporters, uh, supporters.49ers.com, uh, and you did your episode on there, man. Tell us, tell us a little bit about that and what the experience was like. I mean, that was awesome. I mean, for four guys from the UK to follow in your footsteps, Brad Graham, when we got the call, I suppose it was like you, you, you check your email and you're like, is that really the 49ers? <laughs> you go on LinkedIn and you're like, Nick Clark is really asking us guys to talk football. And I suppose for us, we had the Chargers game to review and that was a 1am start in the UK. And the game finished at half four in the morning. And obviously, Hufanga sealed the game with 57 seconds left on the clock. So it was difficult to switch off. I think I got to bed about half six on the Monday morning and then had to be up for work at nine. So Monday was a long day, Breezy. But um, Tuesday was awesome, man. Nick Clark, he's a top bloke. He's looked after us. He threw the watch party in Leeds, which you've probably seen the footage. So they came over to the UK. They threw a watch party for us against the Falcons. And the community you talk about is awesome. I mean, we're over here trying to do what we can to support you guys. And it is nice to see the community and it's nice to see everyone welcoming us. And it's great to see the uh, residency love in the chat. Oh, l listen, the, the love for residency, resident, residency is crazy right now. Uh, and shout out to our sponsors, right? Because uh, I believe we both are sponsored by residency. So shout out to residency. We'll go ahead and give them their promo spot right here. You guys, you can get these exclusive caps. You know, we stay with those exclusively nine of hats. You know what I'm saying? So go to www.residency.com. You can use promo code SF Breezy. Uh, I don't know, Paul, what's your promo code? They can use either one of them. No, I just use yours, Breezy. I'm on your show, so I'm happy for them to use your Appreciate code. the love, bro. Appreciate You're the welcome. love. I got. I feel like I got to bend my brim more. <laughs> yours look way more official. You got that trucker style flowing. Let me get a bit. I, this, I'm usually not the bend the brim guy. I'm a 5950 guy. If you know, if you don't know what that is, that's a fitted hat. So when I rock the snapback, I just kind of just let it do its thing. But I kind of like. I'm digging the style that you rocking it with. Yeah, your junk clean too. My junk be all. <laughs> Gotta get the, the dust, too much dust in Connecticut, man. I don't know what's going on here, but nah, it's all good, man. Uh, guys, it's good to be here. It's Friday, a couple of more days till game day, till kickoff. You know what I'm saying? The 49ers are out. What's the weather like over in England, by the way? I'm just curious, because it's cold here. Yeah, it's cold. To be honest, I live in the northeast of England, Breezy, so it's always raining and cold. <sighs> so there's a couple of guys who are in London in the chat, but the weather's not bad today. It's It's a little bit cold, but... To be so fair, London is more middle or south? South. So I'm Got the you. I'm Got you. close towards Scotland and uh, Durham Cathedral, Hogwarts and all that that's, kind of. 
I love it. I love it. Yes, Kylie, we got your birthday coming up, bro. And you know what? I, I'm going to do something to take care of you, fam. I promise you. I got you, fam. Uh, he just said he ordered a residency joint for his birthday. His birthday's on Monday, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'll be out in Mexico getting ready for the game. Gonna have to toast one up for you, dog. You know what I'm saying? So uh, uh, shout out to everybody. Shout out to my man, Kylie, in the building. All right, let's get down to the gritty, bro. 49ers are out in Colorado. Let's talk about this climate. Let's talk about the altitude. You can see people out there putting stuff out there like, man, hey, if they really wanted to get hip to the altitude, why didn't they just go to Mexico, uh, you know, and start there? But they 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 pit stopped uh, in, in Colorado. It's currently cold out there. Uh, you saw some of the video footage yesterday. It was kind of funny. But let me ask you this question, and we're going to ask everybody else out there in the chat. Um, how, how, like... How much do you feel like being in the altitude will affect the 49ers playing this game? It's going to be the same for both teams. It's not like when we go to Denver and Denver are used to the altitude Ooh. and we're not. So, and I do like that we stopped over in Colorado. I must admit, Breezy, I would be like Debo. I don't know if you saw the footage of Debo hitting the wall yesterday. The that, that would be me. I, I'm not going out there, Kyle. I'll, you're, I'll used to, you're used to the cold, though. You just said it was cold. Yeah, but that's fair, funny. Um, Debo was peeking through the door like, I don't know, should I come out? It's cold. Now nah, that's funny. They all said it was cold. If you watch the pressers, everybody said it was cold. But continue, please. <laughs> I, I think for for us, I mean, we're going to establish the run game. Um, obviously, for the kickers and for the punters, it could cause an issue because the ball can hang longer in the air. I don't believe it'll come to that on Monday night, Breezy, because the Cardinals are quite beat up. And I'm quite confident of our chances. But I do feel that the Cardinals not doing any altitude training does seem a strange one. How do you find that the Cardinals not doing anything? Do you think that's going to give us an advantage? Yeah, I mean, I got I got to rewind back to the Denver game because we I don't know if we got hip to the altitude as quickly as we thought. And this could be a good sign of Kyle Shanahan learning from his mistake, right? saying, hey, we, we got an extra day. Let's just go to Denver. Let's start there. And then we only got to go, what, 2,000 feet higher in elevation when we get to Mexico? So I, I think this is a good thing. As far as the Cardinals, I really, I'm, I like. I mean, I feel like it'll be more detrimental to them uh, because when you're thinking about playing in a higher altitude, it's all about, you know, eating right, making sure you stay hydrated. Do you have enough wind? Can you sustain longer drive? And, and that's what we're talking about, right? And so I, this is probably more detrimental to the Cardinals. The 49ers are trying to get a one upper uh, or upper hand on the Cardinals in this particular situation. And I think it's a big deal because when I look at that Denver game, I really felt like as, as bad as that was Jimmy Garoppolo's worst game in my, my opinion of his career. And as bad as he was, the team didn't play well either. Right. And so it's just like, damn, we only put up 10 points. You know what I'm saying? So like at the end of the day, you know, maybe we just, maybe we just weren't right, you know? And, 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 and I'm thinking this is them getting right. This is them saying, you know what? We learn from our mistakes. I, I heard Fred Warner say it like, look, you know, it's, it's a good thing. We're out here. George Kittle. It's a good thing. We're out here. George Kittle said he didn't have much to go off of. So he contacts his boy, Travis. Kel I, I realized that George Kittle and Travis Kelsey are like this. They're like dumb and dumber. Like they're like super tight, best friends, you name it. Right. Because that's who we contacted. And he said, and Travis said, Hey man, yo, the altitude is crazy in Mexico. Right. It's, it's, it's different from Denver. I don't know how much different other than the elevation, but he said it's a different feel. So I do like the fact that the 49ers are out there doing this. I love the fact that the Cardinals aren't out there doing this because this should give the 49ers uh, the advantage. So um, this could be a good thing. Could be a great thing, you know, for the 49ers. And I see Groovy saying, consider the Cardinals aren't even doing altitude training. It should, it should help us more. Now, let's talk about this game. All right. I want to get you I want to give I want you to give me some of your key takeaways. Uh, you know, what some of the key things the 49ers must do. OK, what do you think the 49ers must do to get this victory? Well, the most important one is we need Jimmy to have his third game in a row without an interception, without turning the ball over. I was also very interested to find out that the Cardinals have the worst defense for yards after the catch. Yeah, that, and let's talk about that because that was going to be my next thing, and I'm glad you brought that up. So the four, the Cardinals are ranked 32nd in defending Yak. And if 
49ers are ranked fourth in Yak. I was going to say the chat might be able to help us out because isn't there a team from San Francisco that's pretty decent at yards after the catch? So Number four. Kyle, Kyle Shanahan's going to be rubbing his hands together with the yards after the catch, CMC, Mitchell. He, he showed how he could use those two breezy against the Chargers. I know there was a lot of people on 49ers Twitter unhappy with the amount of touches CMC had. I wasn't one of those people, Breezy. CMC hasn't been brought here to be the workhorse. And I think we might see a big game from George Kittle on Monday night in Mexico. I think he's talked well, like you said, about the practicing. I don't know if you saw he was asking for more touches. I don't know if you saw the interview where he was being a team player, where he was kind of saying, no, I haven't been knocking down Carl Shanahan's door. But my boy Jimmy on the sidelines, I've been putting my arm around him and saying, Get me that ball. So I, I like I like that. I, I like that from the team. The Cardinals are pretty beat up at the moment. I think they've got injuries across the board. And I think someone's dropped it in the chat breezy that D Hop hasn't been trading. So that would be a massive win for our secondary, not having to face D, D Hop because he's one of the best in the league. I agree. I it's it's funny because I feel like the 49ers will be well prepared. For D Hop, the question is, could they stop Rondell Moore and Marquise Brown? Because I believe those guys are going to be out there. They're going to have a three-headed monster, in my opinion. The question is, who's going to be the quarterback? Because I don't think Kyler Murray is going to play with his hamstring issue. And then there's Colt McCoy, who has a knee issue. He's not the same as Kyler Murray. He's not elusive, but he's he's he can still get the ball out pretty damn quick. Like he's he's a veteran, right? He's kind of like a Jimmy Garoppolo, sort of, kind of. I don't think he throws the ball down the field well, but he gets the ball out of his hand quick, and he beat the 49ers last year. So that's the question mark. Colt McCoy, uh, and what would the connection be like between him and the other wide receivers? You know what I'm saying? Shot J says, Breezy, the altitude will affect Niners significantly. A handful of days won't make much difference getting used to the difference. That, that makes it takes weeks. That's, it's it, and it's funny that you said that and you you know I, I believe you I was out there and I don't think that it bothered me the altitude I don't I don't know what that I don't even know what it means like I was just out there and I felt like I was still living I can't front I walked up some steps and I, I, I it was a little different but that maybe that was it I don't know I don't know what the elevation does to the oxygen levels and the brain and the body. I don't know, but it, it, you're right. It probably is going to take them weeks to get acclimated. But the fact that they're out there getting some type of acclimation is better than zero acclimation. And so that should give the 49ers some type of upper hand uh, in this particular situation, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? I, I, that's just what I think. Um, You said a lot of stuff, and I want to go back to the George Kittle. I'm doing a poll right now for the chat. Um, uh, who will lead the team in Yak, right? So I got Kittle, Ayuk, Debo, and I'm going to put C-Mac in there, all right? CMC. We're going to put CMC. Who's going to lead the team in Yak? And it's funny that you brought that up because I woke up this morning. I'm listening to the pressers. I clipped it up. I put it out there. That's the one thing that stuck out to me the most. It was George Kittle's take on him getting more touches. Now, I don't really talk to Kyle Shanahan about it, but I do tell Jimmy that I'm wide open. Let's, let's ex let me just play it. How about I do that? I play it for you, and then you, you can tell me what you think from that because some, some people may not have heard it, and I want y'all to understand where George Kittle is coming from. Here we go. Actually, let me play. Let me play the one without the music. No, I mean, have I walked into his office and said, "Can I give me the ball?" No, I haven't done that. But I mean, I tell Jimmy on the sidelines all the time, and I always tell him, "Like, hey, I'm open. I'm I've been one-on-one -on -one coverage. I'm available. Just throw me the ball when you need me." And uh, happened last week. You know, I'd love more than two targets, but it is what it is. We're winning the game, so. Uh, but yeah, I love the ball in my hands and I, um, I like providing a spark for the offense. Let's talk about this because they got to get the ball in this guy's hands. Who was the spark in the, in the Los Angeles Chargers game? Who, who do you, who would you say was the spark? Well, the start of the second half, it was CMC with that, uh, slant ball from Jimmy, but then when he needed to go third and long, he went to George Kittle, didn't he? He went to his boy over the middle. And I think the second half, the defense just inspired the team. So when y'all talking there about Rondale Miller. Of course, he's a great receiver, Breezy, but we handled Cooper Cup quite 
okay. And Cup is a better receiver than Moore, in my opinion. And I think Ryan's is auditioning for that next head coach job. And the defence have shut out two teams two weeks in a row, which isn't an easy thing to do. In the second half, I'm mad, sorry, in the NFL. And I think that he's up for this game. You've got to remember, this is a divisional game. We need to beat the Cardinals both times and we need to beat the Seahawks to take care of the division because all that matters is winning the division and getting a home game in the playoffs for me. And right. these are the three important games because I know you're going to ask me about the schedule. So I thought I'd do my homework before <laughs> I came on today. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Look, I thought that George Kittle was the spark. He, there was the, the 49ers were still, they weren't struggling, but they still didn't get over the hump. And the moment that Kittle caught that short pass and ran, it was like a, he needed 11 and got 21, right? He, he caught it in front of the sticks, got the first down and made other people miss. Uh, that to me was the spark. They got to figure out Jimmy Garoppolo has to figure out how to get the ball to Kittle. Like first and foremost, I I think that is the key to success, especially in the passing game, because when your tight end is working, man, everything else probably will click for Jimmy. Like if he can get that ball to his tight end and in an open space, like the matchup people aren't talking about is Kittle versus Buda Baker. I'm not sure why we're not talking about that matchup, but that is going to be like prime time TV. And the cool thing about the matchup is they each win. Like so, it's not like one dominates the other. Uh, but Buddha's going to get him. I can feel it. And then Kittle's going to ask for that ball. And so uh, Rocky Mountain says Kittle is always double. I disagree. He's not always double. He's, not, he's open. He just said that I go to the sideline and tell Jimmy I'm wide open. Jimmy has to give Kittle the goddamn ball, bro. Give this. Give that man the ball. I guarantee you there will be positivity on the other side. I guarantee it. I can guarantee it. Kittle is... And energy, you know how you say you like me for energy, right? That's Kittle to the 49ers offense, and they need it every single game. You take away the energy, the game is dull and boring. How many people by a raise of a hand was bored and the victory over the Los Angeles Chargers? I thought it was boring. I'm not I'm not just saying that. I really thought it was a boring game, and I'm I, and, and even though there were times I felt like we might lose this game, it was still dull and boring, and then all of a sudden. There was this energy spark from an Energon Cube named George Kittle. And next thing you know, I'm like, okay, that was the first down. I, it was on the third down. You said it. It was something that happened. Uh, and, and, and it was pretty cool to watch. Now, you mentioned Yak. We got, we're stacked with Yak. We're stacked with Yak. You know what I'm saying? Who do you think is going to lead the team in Yak? That is a, a great question. Automatically, my head thought Debo, but to be fair, I don't think Debo is quite on it at the moment, and we'll possibly get into that. But I think CMC might be the boy on Monday night. I think Kyle's liking his new toy. I think Jimmy likes his safety valve. And I like that Kyle has kind of like slimmed the playbook down a little bit over the last few weeks. And basically, if Jimmy needs an out, he's not going to Kittle, like you've said. He's going to CMC. And I think with Mitchell in the backfield and with Debo getting some of his best carries on Monday night against the Chargers. I think CMC will be the one who gets the Yak King. On I say Monday night, Breezy. It's going to be 1 a.m. Tuesday morning for me, remember. <laughs> so I'm going to have to be quiet while all the, the, the wife and kids are asleep upstairs while I'm downstairs trying to be quiet. And That's I can tough. tell you now, it, it doesn't happen. And I've never <laughs> missed a game live yet. In the ten years I've been wow. to the 49ers. So that's that's gonna be tough. This would be if if I was Ruby, this would be the first game I'd be like, Dad, I just <laughs> I just want to stay up. And this is when you'd be like, No problem, we'll get through the next day, however, we get through it. This game is gonna be a thriller in Manila, and I'm loving it. Um, look, I'm going with Debo here, bro. I look if look, I watch did you watch the the show we did with Johnny Dell yesterday? And he I, broke yo. Yeah. And I watched yeah. your show yesterday with John Chapman, so I have to, <sighs> I have to give John a shout out because uh, I'm glad he's got your tickets sorted because I, I know you were worried about that. But Only I was because we're to... in Mexico, bro. If we were yeah. in, in the States, I wouldn't care. But what what happens if the internet go out? No, I I, I like to be organized. I mean, I took, <laughs> I took the day off work today because I've got your show and I've got another show, so I needed, I needed to be organized. But the reason I brought up John Chapman was he did his poll for Colt McCoy. And I was one of those people, Breezy, that voted for the Colt McCoy giving us more nightmares. Ah. What happened last year. That's that's the only reason. 
So I think I all like of us it. thought we were going to beat the Cardinals easy and then Colt McCoy strolled into Levi's and it didn't go the way we hoped it would go. I like that. Um, Tony says, man, you're cool. I, y'all didn't know, y'all don't know about Paul? Come on, man. He's been here before. This man's the GOAT. You know what I'm saying? Um, GSU's like, use your phone's hotspot. Bro, we're, we're going to be in Mexico. I, I don't even know if my phone get data in Mexico. I'm, I'm trying to figure if I can add this international plan. I ain't trying to get charged. You know, $100, I come back, my phone bill, like $1,000. And I'm like, damn, what I do? I was using something. So I don't know how it worked. But we're, we're going to figure it out. I, I, I do know that. But I brought up the Johnny uh, episode because we broke down the play that Jimmy Garoppolo clearly missed, which would have been a walking, yeah. running touchdown for Debo Samuel and was on the RPO. Now, it started with myself and Rohan because that's when we noticed it. And I got really down on Jimmy about that. Like, he can't miss that. Like, and so I thought maybe Jimmy was bad at the RPO and he's not. I realized that he's not. But he was, that was a bad misread because he handed it off to Elijah Mitchell when Debo was just like waving for him. I mean, it was so, he was just like, hey, You know what I'm saying? And it would have been a walking touchdown. If Jimmy fixes that in this game and Debo's wide open, yak for days, bro. So I'm going with Debo in this. Um, I'm hoping they do utilize your boy CMC, especially in the slot. I would love to see that. Um, George Kittle might be a surpriser. Uh, And then Brandon Ayuk, he, he just wants the ball. I don't care if it's a route. I don't care if it's a deep route. I don't think it matters. Just give him the ball. Like, and so I don't, I'm not saying he's not a yak guy because he clearly is. Uh, but I think I think Debo is gonna lead this game. But I I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's CMC. I, I definitely wouldn't. Uh, if it's CMC. Chris says, How's my Espanol? It's not good. I never I I took French uh for like six or seven years. So yeah. It's gonna be bad. So, if I, but I have some friends that speak Spanish that will be with me. So my Espanol is as good as theirs. <laughs> like, how how is that? <laughs> um, what? Give me, give me something that you're excited to watch uh, the defense do in this game. For for example, do you do you think the defense starts out slow again? Well, we record our 49 FFL UK pod on a Thursday night, which is a little bit controversial given the injury report comes out on a Friday. Mm-hmm. And you'll be pleased to know that I believe Fred Warner is going to get a pick six in this game on Monday night. I don't know if you saw the other month when the NFL players wore the flags on the helmet of their nations of origin. And Warner had a Mexican flag on the back of his helmet. And apparently he has some Mexican heritage. So I feel he's going to be going into that game fired up. And I think Fred has been one of the most underrated players in our team this year. You go back and you watch the tape. Fred Warner is the MVP of the team in my eyes. I know Huff's getting all the headlines. I know you've got, obviously, Mooney Ward. But I think Fred Warner gets a pick six. And I think the defence will start fast on Monday night. With it being an international game, and I think the reason you've, you've brought me on today is, obviously, we have the games in London. They have a different atmosphere because the fans are so grateful. I don't know if you saw the Seahawks Buccaneers game in mm-hmm. Germany. The yeah. atmosphere there was electric. And I think I saw this morning, Breezy, 83% of the tickets are going to 49ers 83%, fans. 83%, bro. I heard so, there's a huge 49ers fan base, apparently just in New Mexico. Uh, you know, Alfredo Gutierrez will be there. I'm sure, like, his family, friends, they're going to all be there. This is going to be a great 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 game uh for some do you think Gutierrez gets gets a player a player too personally no because I don't think Kyle Shanahan has that sentiment in him I think Kyle Shanahan <laughs> goes in wanting to win the game so as we saw against the Chargers Breezy you touched upon it quite well there the Chargers game was quite boring in that second half the, the defense had the game under control we were never losing that game but for a pass happy league and you want to see 40, 50, 60 points put on the board. We won with 22 points. So, no, I don't think Shanahan puts him in. Even if it's a blowout, I don't think Shanahan puts him in personally. Do you Do you agree or do you think he might get a couple of snaps? Uh, we if, if we're up by like 40 with maybe the last four minutes of the game, yeah. You've got to remember, 
Because Brock Purdy would be in at that time. This, this is the same head coach that didn't give the ball to Kittle when he needed, what, 10 more yards to break the whole record talk, against And talk about he didn't know. You knew. You Kittle, knew, Kyle. Kittle knew. Kittle knew. And you, Kittle him the knew. Look. Wait, Kyle Shanahan knew too. Don't let him fool you. Talk about Kyle Shanahan say he didn't know. Man, had I known, I would have given it. You knew, Kyle. You knew. I, I, I don't think he plays, but I'm like I said, for, if I'm Kyle, four minutes left, comfortable lead, bring in Brock Purdy, bring in Alfredo Gutierrez, let that man go out there and put on one for his nation. You know what I'm saying? Uh, other than that, nah. Because, hell, we struggling with – Mike McGlinchey and and uh, I keep calling him Ben Garland and Jake Brindle like that them the issues on the offensive line and I went back and watched the Mike McGlinchey stuff and and I get it man he gets a lot of he gets a lot of uh he gets a lot of free passes uh because he does fix and play particularly well but man he do some things bad but Jake Brindle has to be the worst offensive lineman for the I, and I was rooting for the guy. I, I really was. I think he's still a Trey Lance guy. I don't know why he's struggling with Jimmy, but he's missing blocks. You can't miss a block as a center, man. You're going to get two jobs. You hike it, block, and maybe call it slide the protections. Maybe that's it. Anyway, that's – so who put out that poll? Somebody put out something saying uh, – I, some, I think it was 49ers Web Zone. They were like, who's the blame? Is it Kyle Shanahan? Is it Jimmy Garoppolo? Johnny Dell came on here last night and says, how about we blame Jake Brenda? And I never thought about that because when you go back and watch the film and break down the film, you're like, oh man, if he hits that block, that's a touchdown. From the 20, if he just makes this one block, it's nothing but green acres in front of him. And so you're like, dang, it's just like one little thing. And so it makes me go back and question, like, do I get mad at Kyle Shanahan's play calling? Play calling, no. Timing of play calling, yes. Big difference. And so the issue is execution. That's all. That's all it comes down to. <laughs> Y'all crazy. Jake Brindle's small waist basket. He isn't a dumpster yet, uh, but I got my eye on him. So he's a small waist basket, basket, you know, the ones you fill up, and then you got to keep unloading him into the bigger waist basket. He's, he's pretty, he's pretty, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's pretty, he's pretty down there. Um, takes on the game. We're winning this game, yes or no? Yes, we're winning this game. However, I always say nine is win, Breezy. That's what I'm known for on this side of the pond. I'm Mr. Optimistic, but I believe we're going to win 31 to 14 on Monday night. That was a score I called last night, and I'm sticking by that. I'm listening to you. And then Terra Dome says, go and look back at that play. I know number 64 missed the block, bro. I know. Yeah, that was a, a difficult game to watch. It was the main game in the UK on the Sky Sports coverage over here. Yeah. And as soon as the injury went down, Breezy. I was at a watch party, funnily <laughs> enough, and it was just... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't expect that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like calling people trash, man. But damn, when they do some trash stuff, man, there's just no other word. We tried it on the show. We tried to come up with different words for trash. And I don't even know if we did, but he's he's it's just not good. Uh, but he, Daniel, this is this is what we have to do. This is this is the reason he isn't the best, but he's the best option. And you're right. You're 100 percent correct, uh, Daniel Garcia. But my point, Daniel, is this. If he can just make the one block, it's not like we're asking him to block 40 guys It's one and he's missing significantly. That one block is the hole. That one block is the gap in that wide zone. It's it's one block. If he can just, like, stick his pinky finger in there at least, like, maybe, maybe Elijah Mitchell could get through and break it for a touchdown. Maybe Debo Samuel, who just needs one block, because once you get through, Debo is so top heavy when like, and he runs to where like, if you grab try to grab him up here, you're not getting him down. He's too strong, he's too powerful, right? That's why he makes people miss. It may shift him like this, but he's usually his momentum is still going this way, and he's gone, right? It's one block, bro. But you're right, Daniel. You're right. 
I don't know if he average. I don't, I don't know. He might be below average, and they trying to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? And and like you said, it's all we have right now, right? Um, starting on defense, I got to ask you. Uh, look, Jimmy Ward, safety or nickel? Where are you putting him this week? Safety for me. Um, I'm a big Jimmy Ward fan. Um, my colleague Nadji, who I do the Fighting NFA for UK show with, he hates Jimmy Ward breezy. He really? always looks for the faults. Yeah, he's not a Jimmy Ward fan at all. But I know you've been pushing for Jimmy to go back at safety. And obviously, I'd love to see Warmack in at nickel. You know we've got an affinity for Warmack on this side of the pond because my boy Lee Gowland announced his pick in Vegas. So I was there, bro. Yeah, and um, I know Lee's going to be hanging with you and Chapman in my yes. game. So yes. Yeah, I would like to see Jimmy go back there. He's in a contract year, Breezy. I think it's only fair that he gets to play the position he wants to play. And I don't believe he's done anything particularly wrong at that position. So that that's my personal feelings on Jimmy Ward. All right. And now I don't particularly have Eric Armstead playing in this game, especially since he didn't practice yesterday. Uh, but Samson Ebukam didn't practice yesterday either. Do you feel Ebukam is going to be a part of this game plan on Monday night? Or do, the, do you feel the 49ers are confident in their depth? So I'm not a medical expert. However, I ruptured my Achilles tendon in January at the grand old age of 42. And I'm still having issues with it now, Breezy. So wow. I'm not an NFL athlete by any stretch of my imagination. So you can't mess about with the Achilles tendon. So I don't believe he'll be playing on Monday night. I think they're going to continue to let him rest because with an injury like that, unless you surgically repair it, there's not much you can do. You really have to rest it. And if you think about the amount of power that he has to put through his legs, you know, to do the job he's got to do. And ultimately, the defence are playing well without him. I, I do like him. I'm not saying I don't want him out there. I'd love right. to see him and Armstead back. But I think it's just another week of resting them, especially with the fact the Cardinals are so beat up. I think we can get away with him not playing this week and being back for the rest of the season. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't think their offensive line is good. Uh, I think that the 49ers defensive line should be able to take advantage of this uh, particular offensive line. Uh, they don't have their best tight end anymore. Like He's out for the season, so I'm not necessarily worried about who's going to help chip the Nick Bosa side. But whoever's lined up opposite Nick Bosa, and I'm hoping it's Charles Aminahue and that Drake-Jackson combo, and you kind of like put Aminahue inside Drake to the outside. I mean, I'm hoping like whatever we see out there, like it's super highly effective. And I believe that it will be against this particular offensive line um let's go ahead we're gonna open up the phone lines bro uh let's get these phone lines popping i want to hear what the people have to say if they got questions they want to ask you let's leave let's get them on the number is 475-549-7849 it's the call-in show phone-in show whatever it is it's time for you to shoot the breeze let's get up on here the number is 475-549-7849 and we're gonna get this popping so we got to do a quick mic check all right eddie eddie go ahead and talk i want to make sure the people can hear you Mic check, mic check, one, two, one, two. You sound good. My man Paul says he can hear you. I think out there can hear you. Eddie, you are on the Wayne Breezy Show with your boys, Breezy and Paul, man. What would you like to talk about? Bring something up about this game. Go ahead and let him have it. Okay. Um, first off, man, that's it's awesome to see Paul on the show. UK to the Bay. We got fans everywhere. We everywhere, know. baby. I love it. Um, this game... I really liked what I I I I, think I got to watch your show last night with Johnny Dell about the about the uh, breakdown of the Chargers game, bro. I you know I didn't I didn't get into the technical parts of football until I started watching NBN and NGN. You know it's it's uh it's crazy when they go back and watch these plays on what they miss. And yes, I had the same reaction you did when Brendel missed that freaking block i was so mad i was like that's what stopped that play I, I but thought, anyway i whoa. thought johnny was gonna kick me off my own show bro i was so <laughs> mad i got so hot because all we see we had, when, when you watch it on tv we, all you see is the tackle yeah we had the same reaction breezy because as soon as you watch you saw it you're like who missed their block and both me and you at the same time went Brendan, we <laughs> but anyway, um, this game, bro, this is uh, this is a, a chance for us to really, really step on the neck of our own division. 
Um, the Cardinals, another team that's dealing with injuries, just like we've been dealing with injuries, but we're getting healthier. This game, you go in there, I don't care if it's Kyler Murray, I don't care if it's Colton Coy. We need to step on this team like they're nothing. We got this offense, Jimmy, I, Jimmy and Kyle got to spread that ball around. I'm so happy to hear George say that he goes up to Jim and say, hey, bro, I'm open. Hit me. I'm, I'm when when I'm when, hit me with something. I want to help this team. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they're taking the steps to me, the fact that they went to Colorado Springs, this team is being serious about winning now. This is a serious, serious thing. The Cardinals ain't doing nothing. We went to Colorado Springs, get acclimated. Uh, you, if you watch the pressers, Fred Warner talked about when he played in Utah at BYU. He understands the altitude. It does make a difference. And then you got guys like CMC who's from that area. Who, and by the way, if you notice in the pressers, he was the only guy wearing a sleeveless shirt. Everybody else was cold and in a hoodie. I thought that bro, was weird. He said that dude from the <laughs> Georgia mountains, bro. Then he said, then he, and then he said he didn't even have an undershirt on under the the shirt. I'm like, whoa! I that's he must still think he in college. I feel like in college, that's that shit you do in college. You just don't dress. And Kyle, you wear yeah. flip flops all year round. Like it just doesn't matter. But that's that's what he was on. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But this is a this is a good game for for us. It's a neutral neutral site. I don't care if they say the Cardinals are the home team or they wait team. We got we got that stadium on lock. Eighty three percent ticket sales. Forty nine er fans. Just the team just needs to go and execute, man. That's it. Go and execute. Stomp them out. Get this game done. I like what Fred said on the locker room breakdown afterwards. They showed him uh, breaking down the team. He said, hey, it's a one-game season. Every every game is a one-game season. We're done with the Chargers and move on to the Cardinals. Let's take care of business. That's all that matters. What's up, Eddie? Listen, man, I appreciate you for jumping on here, man. We love you over here. Stay up, stay faithful. Enjoy your weekend. And more importantly, let's get this win. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And and shout out to, to Cal. You said it was his birthday on Monday. It is also my daughter's birthday. She's turning 18. So hey, we gotta we're going to celebrate. Uh, maybe I'll do a live show. We'll just sing happy birthday to uh, your daughter and, and Kali. We'll do something. I'll try to report live from the tailgate. Yes, sir. And and uh, and good, good to see you on there, Paul. Uh, I'm glad we got fans all the way over in the U.K., Hey man, let's let's get this win. Let's enjoy this game and get this win. I, I appreciate the the love and the support. We've got a huge following, and happy birthday to your daughter from one dad to another. It's lovely to hear when people are celebrating birthdays. And let's get that win on Monday. Let's go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go. All right, brother. Peace out. Later, bro. Peace. All right, man. We got some calls in the queue, man. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and call them back. Uh, let's get my man Gammon Brown. Uh. Let's get him on here. Haven't talked to Gammon in a minute. It's been a, it's been a little minute. Been forwarded to an automatic and voice we're message. forwarded to an automatic voice message system, which means he's probably trying to call as we speak. Let's go ahead and call my bro Dion, and we'll give Gammon a call back. I told you he was calling as I was calling. <laughs> Breezy, what's D good? What's going on, D? What's going on, family? Chilling, chilling. What's going on, Paul? Good to see you, baby. Good to see you too, Dion. Nice to hear from you, buddy. Yeah, man. The same here, man. This this, this gonna be a fantastic game. We gonna have, we gonna have a good time. We got Breezy down in Mexico representing for us. That's gonna be just insane. Yeah, think about it, man. I don't think Mexico is ready for Breezy. Yeah, I don't think so either, <laughs> man. I like I, I have a I have a suitcase full of energy, uh, and it's 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 about to be lit down there, bro. Oh, this is gonna be super lit. Hey, telling you, look, make sure you latch on. Make sure you latch on to somebody for sure um, that speaks good Spanish, bro, and get you some tacos, man. If you're going down to Mexico, you're going to the birthplace of, you know, what I'm saying Mexican food, bro. Yes, sir. So you gotta enjoy. My wife is uh, part Mexican, and her mom is from Durango. Okay. So, believe me, I ain't been yet, but believe me, when I go, well, I'm gonna have me some good food, bro. I'm talking about. That pressure off the, you know, it looked like they have like a street taco session. It's gonna be yes, fun. sir. Yes, sir. But either way, man, this Cardinals game is a simple thing. All we got to do is go down there, execute, punch them straight in the mouth, 
and we'll be okay. I would rather us go down there and get a win because then we're four and in the division. We start controlling things more. Like, you got to think about it. If we get into a momentum swing now, we don't want two games in a row. We add a third one. That brings the morale up around the team. If we can get down there and make sure that the offense starts to gel properly, where we have all these weapons and they're all being utilized, George Kittle becomes a threat again. CMC and Debo become that threat. Elijah Mitchell's already running all over any and everything. So if that offense can can gel and be cohesive and take it out on the Cardinals, it's going to make our life that much easier. Because the only person the Cardinals got is Rondell Moore and D-Hop. I'm not going to trust Hollywood Brown coming off an injury. He's going to be rusty. You know what I'm saying? There's no Zach Ertz, so we don't really have to worry too much about the tight end situation there. So – we have every advantage. We have the better defense, and you're right. Buddha versus Kittle is a real thing. Real thing, bro. You remember the video, bro? I when got he, the he video, bro. His name. He Listen. was like, Buddha! <laughs> Yo. Like, he's like, come for me because I'm coming for you, and I'm going to whoop yo. You know what? That's, and, like, that's how it is. That that energy, that, that competitiveness is you. That's what I'm talking about, bro. Because here's the thing, right? Remember, if you remember, I think it was uh, the first game, or a second game, I can't remember which one it was. Buddha had mm-hmm. got the best of him on a play. Yep. Yep. And then George Kittle was like, Give me the damn ball. Give me the ball. Yep. He's like, Look, give me the ball. Just give me the now, ball. Now I got now I gotta break them off. That's what yeah, happened, bro. That's what I that's like. Basic. That's what it is. It's like, oh, you got me? That's 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 cute. That's cute. You did something small, that's nice. You know what I'm saying? He gonna tell your little family you got George Kittle on one play. I'm gonna kill you for the rest of the game and make you regret <laughs> that you got me on that one play. <laughs> The oh. mindset that Kittle has. And I love what he said. I'm open to all the time. What are you talking about? Yo, he said, I'm open. He said to Jimmy, I'm open, bro. Just throw me the he damn said, I'm like 7 Eleven, 24 7, baby. <laughs> I'm here. I just want to but- make sure we heard the same thing, bro. Because a lot of people saying he's he is double covered. So I don't want to I don't want to take that away from what you were saying yeah. out there. He does get double covered, but no, 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 no. Jimmy not even seeing him half the matter of fact. There was a play in this game. Jimmy hit Brandon IU underneath. George Kittle was wide open over the top for a walk-in touchdown. You, bro, he, it, it'd be certain things. We we all know that 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 ten. You know he has a little bit of an issue with his vision when it comes to things. Because you re, when you rewatch the tape, the tape in the film, you start looking and you go, "Damn, this dude was open deeper downfield." But we know who he is. We know what he does. So we're not going to complain. We just got to take what we can get while we have him. That's it. So. It's another situation for me. Jimmy, don't F this up. That's all we ask. You haven't been screwing it up the past two games. So keep up not screwing way. it up, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't and people know me. People know I am I do not care for Jimmy. But I'm okay with him as long as he doesn't screw it up. And Brendel, Brendel, listen to me. If you watch Nitty Gritty Niners, I want you to hear me loud and clear. Read the rule book on where Lyman could go. Because almost every game. What does the what's the penalty that Brendel gets? Oh, Illegal man, man down field. Why are you all the way down there when you should be back here? Because stay it's, here. I, I got a re, I got an answer, bro. You might not okay. like it, but I got an answer. It's because I'll take it. it's because Jimmy Garoppolo is the quarterback. Really? So he just runs off and leaves Jimmy because you don't like him? He's, like, oh. he, I think in Brendo's eyes, Trey Lance was the guy he was hip to, and he's yeah. expecting Trey to take off when a play looks like it's about to break down or whatever, and Jimmy's still trying to find that. Jimmy's not going to do that. And I think that yeah. is the issue. I really think that's his issue. I know people might not believe it, but that okay. has to be – he like he just hasn't relearned it yet. Dude, you got a new quarterback, bro. One is white, one is black. Understood. It should be super yeah, simple to you, figure out. Like, like this is Jimmy and this is that's Trey. Like, they're totally different. One's old, one's young. I, I, I don't get it. I don't know what he needs to do to figure it out. But he's always nah, getting that bro, stupid you, penalty. You hit it. You hit the nail on the head with that. And it makes perfect sense. If that is the reason, it's like, yo, you do have to adapt to the guy that's back there. Because I can tell you right now, I know that O-line was most likely trying to adapt to Trey's style and knowing he could take off in certain situations. But now they're like, okay, we just revert back to being a regular O-line because Jimmy's here. And we know he ain't taking off going no damn where. He more likely to walk into a sack than avoid one. Mm. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. This game versus the Cardinals in Mexico City will definitely continue to build the momentum for us 
as long as we take out the, you know, take the win. Um, I know over the past couple of days, the big thing with George Kittle and his tail and everything, a lot of people have been saying it's not a problem. Bill Belichick just said that it is. Um, but either way, I'll say this. We can go. We still we still punch teams in the mouth. So I started. It took me a minute to gather what you were you were putting out yesterday, Breezy. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, what is he? Why, why does he keep saying that this is not an issue? So I went back because I had an NFL Plus. I could watch all the games. I started watching all the games, and people, I gotta agree, it, just, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. But they can't stop certain things, man. We you can sit there and know that it's a run or a pass, and he's still the tra- for for it for Trent it whoops your ass for the team it puts them at a slight disadvantage but it's just it's the disadvantages come when we just don't execute in the Atlanta game we just didn't execute it wasn't about them knowing whether we was passing or running they just couldn't get stuff done so it's execution that's what needs that's what we got to focus on anybody having to tell that's just great great uh, film research and awesome for that person that they they figured it out said it before, I'll say it again, Darrell Revis said he used to shut down Chad Ochocinco because when he was getting the ball, he would tug on his right glove twice. Everybody has it. Okay, so, I get what you're saying. Yeah, Everybody has it. Everybody tell. does some way of – everybody has certain things that they do. Some defenders are just smart enough to say, hey, they tipping. Like they they, yeah. they telling the play right here. Now you got to go out there and, and, and execute. And stop it. Yeah. yeah. I think for the 49ers, I just don't think – I'm not saying – and, Paul, what do you feel about this uh, before Deion gets up out of here? Like, Trent Williams clearly is lining up to probably tell if it's a run or a pass, so telling the player or tipping the play. But, like, what are your thoughts on that, uh, Paul? Because I haven't gotten your, your your thoughts on it. Well, to echo what, what Deion said, we have the equivalent over here, Deion. It's called Game Pass. So I don't watch any of the sports, yeah. Breezy. So I've been back and watched all the games. I'm, I'm a fan, first and foremost. I look up to the likes of you and Dion. And when I saw that Appreciate break, you. I thought, I'm going to go and have a look for myself. Equally, Trent Williams is Trent Williams. Trent Williams could shout out what he's going to do. <laughs> Nobody's going to beat Trent Williams. Right. Well, um, like you said, I think it gave the team a slight disadvantage. But overall, mm-hmm. I think in the scheme of yeah. the NFL, I think Dion said it quite well. And I'm on the same page as my brother Dion, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah, and guess what? D. Kyle Shanahan says if he felt like it was a problem, he would say something. He would. Oh, he would have been addressed that. Yeah, yeah. Kyle's not going to allow you to screw up his his game plan by that, tipping things. One hundred percent, bro. <laughs> that, Kyle is the ultimate leader of that team. You, if you, if he thinks you're giving them something, yo ass. Is oh grass. yeah, he gonna come. Yeah, oh, and yeah. and the, the the one thing that I'll say before I get up out here because I know you got people to call back. Kyle is one of those people, bro. From what I've heard. He he's a he's a very rude person in practice to say it lightly. Trent Williams? Like he no, Kyle. Oh. Bro, really? I heard he bro, I heard he be out there laying in the folks. Good. Well, like it's not Is that we, good? Cuz Bill Parcells It is. Bill Parcells yes. was the probably the worst. Well, yeah, I mean, hey, look, I don't care what nobody said. And, and Bill Parcells is the dopest head coach of all time. Okay. You know why? You know who is if you mm-hmm. if you can rip Tom Brady? Mhm. You, yeah, you can rip anybody. Okay, I got and you. The beauty of that is it, it's it's making sure that everybody understands we're all on the same level. I don't care that he's Brady. I don't care that he got this many rings. He gonna get a ring. He gonna get ripped a new one too because he don't know how to act. If he ain't doing what I said on this field, I'm gonna get at him just like I would get at you. Love those type so of coaches. Just, it levels everybody off. Yep, I agree. I agree. Bro. All right, Breezy. And I appreciate y'all letting me call in. Anytime, Paul, bro. Nothing but love to you, man. Love to you and the family, bro. Hey, you D. And your beautiful D, daughter. D. When wife. is your um? When is your next show? Oh, I'm doing one probably in. Uh, I'm gonna do it today. Oh, it's today? Because I was gonna say today. if you do yeah. it tomorrow, uh, or 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 something, I'm gonna try to jump on. Uh, oh well, yeah. Let me let me know. Okay. Let me know. We'll link up. I'll definitely do one tomorrow. All right, because yeah. I'll be traveling, so I, I'm gonna try to. I know, you know you be on. I'm, no, but I I, w- I want to try to jump on during my travels before I get on the airplane or after I get off the airplane. Either way, I want to do something. Rock out with you. Yeah, hit me. Yeah, hit me up, bro. Let me know when you land and whatnot. You know, I always, I always check on you anyway to make sure that you got where you're going safely because you you know you fam. I, I want to make sure you're solid. Appreciate you. Um, but 
Paul, once again, nothing but love, breezy, nothing but love. Everybody out there, hit that like and subscribe button. And I bet not come in that chat again. And the <laughs> likes versus the amount of people is lopsided. Let's it's, get it together, just, folks. It's just Devo the, the like button. Will Smith the like button. Punch the like button. I don't care what you do. Just hit the like button. I haven't said I haven't heard the Will Smith term in a minute. We got to bring that back. I have to bring that video back. <laughs> uh, one of the greatest videos of all times. But Dion, I love you, bro. Stay up, stay faithful, man. Number love, peace. All right, peace. All right, man. We got a couple of people we're gonna give quick callbacks to. Let me get my man Gammon on here. So we're gonna do Gammon. We're gonna do my man Scott, and then my brother E Nice for sure. Now that we got the lines back going. Hey, how's it going? GB, what's going on, family? No, oh, man, not too much. Just excited to be here. See, see both you guys here rocking the mic. So loving it. Loving appreciate it. you. Appreciate you. I want to I want to jump off on a on a couple things, so uh, I'm gonna try not to monologue everyone to death. But um, I really think that Dion uh, has a and, and shout out to you, Dion. Man, it's, it's been a while since I've I've had a chance to talk to you, but it's great to hear you hear your voice and, and seeing that you're doing well and, and all that kind of stuff. But I think Dion has kind of the right, right attitude um, towards Jimmy, right? So he's admittedly open. Um, and been pretty open, expressive in, in all the platforms I've seen him on, right? As I don't want to say overly critical, but he'd be more on the side of negative towards Jimmy, right? Mm-hmm. And then you have some fans that are, they're kind of like on the opposite spectrum, right? Kind of like Jimmy Garoppolo apologists. But what he's done is he's found a way to kind of just slip himself into kind of more in the middle and just be like, you know what, regardless of how I feel, right? Like, regardless of how people feel about Jake Brendel, like, this is this is our guy, right? This is kind of what we have to kind of rock with. And I think that's, that's good to kind of have that, um, that viewpoint. And uh, I want to say, you know, people want to blame Kyle Shanahan for the lack of production on offense, which I, I'm going to try not to seem like a, like a Kyle Shanahan fan or a Kyle Shanahan fan, right? But I, I want to say like, you know, did we not learn anything from last year? Meaning how many points, did we feel last year that we left on the field after every game, you know, and every game felt like a cardiac game. Like we were kind of referring to the 49ers last year as the cardiac 49ers. Uh, we had, we had Mike McDaniels last year as well. And we're acting like, like this is all like the, the struggles on this offense are just all on Kyle Shan. We had Mike McDaniels last year. And I'm going to, I'm going to ask a question to everybody. You know, who's not leaving points on the field. Tua. Tua is not leaving any points on the field whatsoever, right? So that this is why we traded so many draft picks for a guy like um, uh, like Trey Lance. Because you know who's in the bottom as far as throwing deep 20-yard airfield passes in the league? Jimmy Garoppolo. Mm. He's not going to push the ball vertically. You know who is pushing the ball vertically and we all thought had a weak arm or a substandard arm? Tua, but again, it's just interesting. Um, we're giving, I think, Mike McDaniel too much credit, but he has a, a, a quarterback who's willing and able. And we have a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo, who, if we remember last year, not this year's Chicago Bears game, but last year's Chicago Bears game, you remember that spat that, uh, that Kyle Shanahan had with Jimmy Garoppolo where he said, can you effing do this or not? It's not that hard. And then all of a sudden, Jimmy Garoppolo uncorked a long bomb right before halftime, which led to a field goal. But it took Kyle Shanahan to dig in his four points of contact to actually make him force him to throw um, that that football. So again, I, chicken or the egg, right? I'm going to say uh, there's a, there's a, everybody in the organization knew that they were limited by Jimmy Garoppolo's potential. And I'm not a Jimmy Garoppolo um, apologist, and I'm not where uh, – shout out to Dion, I see you there. Uh, my brother, but uh, I'm not I'm not on the far end of the spectrum either where, where Dion is. I've, I've always kind of just kind of remained cool and calculated. Um, and then the last kind of part of my monologue um, that I was going to do was uh, altitude um, could potentially be in the favor for the Cardinals, what the inclement weather was for the Bears. Um, a shout out to all my vets right now, all, all the people who, who are currently serving or have served in the, in the military. Um, and then, and then, uh, this one kind of goes out to all the military vets who have served in Afghanistan, right? So when we were fighting in the, the high altitude, right, in the mountains and everything like that, mm. you know, 
but did a couple days, two or three days, get us ready to to then just assault up, you know, scale the mountainsides, right, over there in Afghanistan with that high elevation? And the answer to that would be no. I mean, it took us like at least a month wow. for our body to acclimate. But what I think that these couple days do, though, is it shows them like, hey, if you push yourself like this or you go too hard, you need to understand how to pace yourself for this game because the 60 minutes is going to feel like a 90-minute game. Like Good you, point. Your body can't completely be physically acclimated just for two or three days in Colorado. But it does, I think, uh, we're fooling ourselves if we think that this is, uh, is going to hurt us because what this does is, uh, we have to remember, this is going to be a dink and dunk game as far as through the air if it's colt mccoy versus jimmy garoppolo two quarterbacks who are notoriously known for throwing three to five yard passes the difference of this is going to be is that this forces our hands on defense they, they can't do as much man-to-man coverage correct that, is, that exerts so much energy so they're going to have to be forced into more percentages of zone it's just too hard to all the cuts to, to be doing that okay so so right off the bat and which I think favors dink and dunk quarterbacks because they have they're going to have their pockets of opportunity as long as they can read those coverages. Uh, also, too, the Cardinals, their wide receivers are are built like motorcycles. Where when I look at like Devo Samuel, right George Kittle, like these guys, these guys aren't meant to be like a zero to sixty motorcycle, right? They're they're like Big Mac trucks kind of coming through. But that speed right there is why I don't. I wish that they would move Jimmy Ford back to a free safety position because we have no speed back there. We have no speed with Gibson. We have no speed with Talanoa Hufunga. So that, that, lack of, that lack of speed right there, I mean, that, that's why we saw the Chargers kind of attacking uh, back there. Because once they get past Jimmy Ward, it's, there, there's nobody really there. Um, and then I know that we were kind of talking about Hollywood Brown uh, coming off of injury and not being a scary guy. But Holly Brown, Hollywood Brown doesn't have to come back from an injury and beat A.J. Brown. He just needs to warrant the distraction like Gray. And if I could right now, while everyone's listening, please join the Discord. It's somewhere there in the description. But you guys need to join the Discord. Um, if there's anything that you want to you call out, uh, my man Wayne Breezy or anybody else, you know, or if you forget something, you guys can shoot it down in the Discord. And, and you might even come up with a really good topic of discussion that Way Breezy might kind of rock with or it could be a poll question. So your contributions do end up here. So, But, uh, but I, now I want to open it up to everybody else now. I just uh, waterboard it, everybody. Hey, man. Listen, Gammon, we appreciate the call. Uh, I, I loved every second of it. It was kind of hard. To, I, we, I could hear you, but I think out there uh, it sounded like you were on the speakerphone, so they couldn't hear you much say. Some people were able to hear you clearly, but I tell you what, it was spot on. We're going to talk about this with you off the air. We appreciate you. Thank you for your contributions. Thank you for your service. And and we we, we truly appreciate you over here. All love, man, man. All love, brother. All right, man. So I know a lot of people were struggling to hear him, but I was hearing him loud and clear. I mean, he, he, spoke, about, he spoke about the altitude, saying that mm-hmm. like it, it, like it's going to be a problem. So let's not act like it's not. He says... These couple of days out there aren't going to fix the problem. You heard somebody say that in the chat. It's not going to fix uh, fix the problem, right? Get it. Um, but he did say he's hoping that these couple of days, when they're out there pushing themselves, they have a little bit of extra something storage in the space to keep going, right? And that's what he's hoping for with the altitude. He also spoke about a lot of the other stuff. Uh and, and that's kind of what it is. We got to get these other calls on here. Dion, thank you for showing up. Paul, I hope you're still good over there, man. It's it's I, These shows go however they want because it's all about you guys out there, right? So we're going to call my man Scott Hill back, and let's see what his take is going to be like on the game. Paul doesn't sound like he's worried, but he did say this should be a dink and dunk game. Jimmy Garoppolo should have a great game. What up, Breezy? What What's, up? Oh, Scott Hill's in the building. What's going on, baby? What's happening, my friend? Hey, good show. Hey, Paul. Peace to you, brother. All the way over there on the other side of the pond. We got to get you over here to a game soon. For sure. Hey, Bree. Uh, I, I just story. wanted to uh, uh, say uh, this O-line has not gelled yet. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, the the one, uh, the one uh, play that Brendel did, the one play that Burford did, 
uh, what's his name? Brunskill can't be in two places at one time, trying to cover both uh, the right guard and the center. Mm -hmm. uh, just can't be done. So until Brendo gets his head out of his butt, you know, we're going to get those bonehead plays and we're just going to have to suck it up because what are you going to do? Nothing. Who are you going to put in there? Mm -hmm. We don't have nobody. So until that they really gel, Jimmy's going to have a little bit of problems on the pass pro. But, uh, and if they don't get their shit together, we're going to have problems in the run game. It, it all predicates everything. Uh, the run game predicates the pass, all that, you know, we all know that. But uh, we just got to, they just got to gel. Uh, I think we're going to go in and slap these people down. Uh, one, we're the Niners, and two, we just we have too much talent. There's just no way that these people uh, are going to run over us again. We're getting healthy. Everybody's coming back. We're getting our second win. It's the second half. This is what the 49ers do. We come back, and we take care of business. So uh, I just want to say to everybody out there, keep the faith. We're, we're going to do this in Mexico City. Uh, Breezy, check it out. Have a great time in Mexico City. My family is is from Mexico. Awesome. And they they say you're gonna have an excellent time in Mexico City. You're oh. gonna have a blast there, bro. I'm so happy. Yeah. Just be careful. Just be careful. Don't don't drink the water, bro. I won't drink the water, bro. I, this will be the one time I drink juice. <laughs> now I'm just playing. I don't even drink juice. I'll figure out what I'm drinking. Maybe just tequila. Maybe just tequila it all the way till till go. Tuesday. But nah, man, I appreciate you, Scott. Thank you. Okay, buddy. Hey, uh, God bless to you. God bless to Paul. Um, and you guys have an excellent show. All right, brother. Peace. Thank you. Peace I'm out. out. That's my man. I call him Uncle Scott, man. Uh, like I, I just like to when I talk some, to some of the older faithful, man, they automatically become uncles and aunts, man. Like that's just what they are, uh, or moms and dads. That's kind of how I look at them. I, I respect our elders. But listen, uh, he talked about the offensive line gelling, and it's week eleven. <laughs> how many games we got? Seven. I think the line, I'm not going to lie, I think the line has gelled, um, you know, to an extent. And to be honest with you, this, like, they've all been together majority of the season. Like, we really haven't had any O-line injuries outside of Trent being out for a bit. Um, and that's kind of rotating at that left tackle spot. But for the most part, they've been together. The one thing that I would have liked to have seen in the offseason is them together then. I honestly was not a big fan of the musical chairs at the offensive line situation because I wanted them to gel there. And Trey, hey, we appreciate you, Ty. Ty, I saw you on here, man. You was heavy hitting too, bro. Don't don't be modest. You was out here heavy hitting. Um, but I would have liked to have seen that in the off season. Um, oh no, I you never said DeAndre Hopkins. Nah, look, at, at, if there's one thing that that people know, D Hop gonna get his. Mm -hmm. That's going to be consistent. He he will get his. It depends on who else you got in your you know on your team. Yeah, I mean look look at your fantasy squad, and if you don't have nobody better than D Hop, obviously don't sit him. But if you have somebody who's going up against a uh, a team who's um more more likely to give up more yardage for the pass stuff like that, then yeah, you go ahead and you put that person. Nine times out of ten, the apps will tell you. Like I have the Yahoo oh. Fantasy app right now. Start saying oh, no, I, yeah, D Hop. No, I'm starting saying Brown because I don't think D. Wait, what is playing? Yeah, because he won't get in the end zone. He'll get you 100 yards. That's 10 but points. He, he may not score. Yeah, yeah. I'm, and I'm say Brown. Who are they yeah. playing? Yeah, I don't. Matter. He's on Detroit, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter. That's that's Goff's guy. That yeah. guy buckets, yards, you name you it. Get anything. I, I and it's it's unfortunate. Now, if it was a different team, I would start. You know our and, and Trav, you know our defense don't give up a lot of touchdowns, bro. If yeah. they do, they come to the non guys we don't know about. Like, you know. So I, I don't see. Oh, we got people still calling. I forgot. All right. Listen, let's get John on here real quick and then we get E nice on the phone. What's going on, JV? What's up, family? Shelly, my bad. We What's were good? we were talking. We I don't know how we got sidetracked to fantasy football, but that we we got into some fantasy <laughs> football talk real quick. Dion was it's like, all good, he man. was like mid statement on what he was saying, and then Trav was like, who do I start? D Hopper St. Brown, St. Brown. We just, <laughs> yeah, that's how we do on What's this up, show. D? 
What's, What's going on? on? What's going on, John? I'm so excited for Paul right now, man. Me too, he's, bro. He's Breezy's number one supporter, man. He's a superstar uh, in my eyes. I just just checked just to see him up there on the panel. Paul, my brother, I, I'm so proud of you, brother. Everything you've accomplished in just one short year, man. You guys are killing it over there across the pond, man. And I'm really proud of you. Just want you to know that I love you so much, man. Uh, D, my brother from another mother. I, I, I'm good to see you, my man. Good to see you as always. Always, John. You know what I love, bro. I, I'm terrified to make a prediction. I, I don't want to make a prediction. <laughs> we got our first prediction, guys. Prediction. We got our first prediction. Here we go, John. You're up. Let's go. No, thank you. No, thank you. My, my <laughs> is not as consistent as your trips over to those games. John, bro, did you have to bring no that different. up, bro? Did you, like, I thought, <laughs> and you're the only person that heard that shit, and you pointed it out on the show last night <laughs> with John. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. I, I was like, please, with all due respect, stay I home. love you, but I need you to stay home. I need you to stay home. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not going to get overconfident because every time I do, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't go my way, uh, and I, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit, uh, you know, I, I'm, I, I, I feel that black cat stuff. So I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm not saying it. Uh, but I do, I do, I do feel like you know, Kyle's three and seven versus Cliff. So we got, we got to, we got to make this right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Cliff sucks. Cliff sucks. Mm -hmm. It's Vance Joseph over there. Okay. Um. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not a believer in Cliff. Uh, I think his personnel has carried him along the way. So um, if I, if, if there's anything, if there's, if there's anything I got for this game, man, it's, it's that we just play 49er football. We stay consistent. We keep doing what's worked and we don't change anything. You know, we don't change much. We need to get creative. And I feel like the creativity was a little bit stagnant versus the Chargers. Um, but I do feel like Kyle kind of limits his creativity. I feel like he, he, uh, he, he puts it in where it counts, division rivals, uh, playoffs, uh, big games, right? I, I just don't see us really opening up the bag of tricks for everybody every Sunday. So I think, I think for the most part, Kyle gets creative versus Cliff uh, Monday in, uh, in Mexico. I think we see, um, hopefully we see some, uh, some jet sweeps. Hopefully we see some, some, just some old school 49er football. You know, I, I just feel like we lack that creativity. And uh, now that we got CMC, we should apply it. Um, we should apply the pressure, man. Never take our foot off the, off the gas. So family, I'm, I'm excited for a Monday night game. I'm excited to see all you guys up there on the panel. <laughs> Love the chat. I love everybody in the chat. Shout out to everyone. Breezy, my brother, I love you, man. Love Be you too. safe. Above above all, above all this shit, mm -hmm. above all this 49er, Arizona Cardinals uh, back and forth, I want you guys to be safe over there in Mexico, okay? For sure. I love Mexico. I've, I've vacationed there a ton. But, you know, I just want you all to be safe. That is my, that is my biggest concern right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to pretend like I should ignore it. I want you guys to be head on a swivel. Be safe, family. All right? I love you guys. Just be safe. Okay? Will do, bro. I, I promise you that. Will do. And I appreciate the love. And uh, we love you back. And thank you for calling in. Guys, make sure you check out John V every Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Locker Room Rant. And you, you, got, you got three guys that just don't give a f about what like they just go out there and it, it their show's more raw than nitty gritty I, hey bro i, I, I thought i was raw until i saw them <laughs> i thought i was great like because i tell people because like okay so at my job whenever we have like new teammates they want you to do an icebreaker and they want you to say something so I always let people know i do a podcast and i always preface it by saying like yo i'm a little a little crazy you know so if you don't really like cursing or, you know, a little bit of that, then probably don't watch because I get a little insane by my Niners. Um, and then I went and watched Locker Room Rap. I was like, oh, man, I'm kindergarten compared to these cats. Yeah, they they on point with it, though. I, love I have a guys. question for you, though, Breezy. Okay. Randall Cunningham, do you know who this person is? I is this the person that impersonates Randall Cunningham? Because he's talking like he is Randall Cunningham. I, I'm not paying him any attention, but we got moderators out there. So once he hits a certain 
thing, they will they will excommunicate him. But no, <laughs> it's not. No, it's not negative. I'm saying this dude oh. is talking like he is Randall Cunningham, like I he's the know. Randall Cunningham, or he's copying off. He's of probably him. copying because <laughs> I definitely don't like. I'm sorry, bro. Yeah, like got, we, we'll, we'll fix this, Terra Dome. I'm gonna make you a moderator, right, Terra Dome? And I want you to ask Randall Cunningham a question. Now, Terra Dome is a 49er faithful for for some time. Yes. And I'm sure he can ask him a question that I won't even know the answer to. And if he gets that answer right, that might just be Randall Cunningham. So, no, bro, Dome, and, hey, man, if you got Randall Cunningham, bro, I would love to have a dude like that on. He Randall was the first one of the first mobile QBs, bro. Oh, before yeah. Mike Vick, before like for all you cats out here that have been watching football since like 2010, you need to go back. OK, there were mobile QBs and Randall was one of them. I watched him for many years do crazy things on the field. So I don't know if this is and really him. him. And he had a cannon, too. Oh, let my me, God, he had a cannon. Crazy. John, yes. Crazy. Let me sh- let me share this real quick story. Okay. Uh, watch the tequila in Mexico. Watch the tequila. Uh, in in two, early 2000s, bro, I was in Mexico, and I, I, I was with some friends, met some, met some, met some ladies, and I got – I got crazy with the tequila. Me too. Next thing mm-hmm. I know, uh-huh. I'm in my gushies. I'm in the sand. And I'm all by myself. And I woke up in the sand all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't. I, I had sand in places sand is not supposed to be. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, buddy. I need you to, I need you to drink, drink water out of a bottle like that. Yeah. <laughs> To the water, or whoever it was, but my man, if they serve you water in a glass vase, okay, do not drink that. Uh-huh. Drink bottled water. Make sure you see the bottle with your own two eyes. You hear me? Do not drink water out of a vase or a glass pitcher or any other kind of pitcher. Just out of the bottle. Okay? What's wrong with, I got to find out what's wrong with the water. I don't Is want. You- okay, so uh, Alberto. Alberto in the chat cleared it up. He said there's nothing wrong with the water. Right. It's just better for you to just drink the bottled water because you have to remember when you go to a different country, everything is different from the water to the meat to the everything. It's all different. So this is part of the reason why. And the other the other trick I'll tell you as well to be mindful with your bottled water. Mm-hmm. Turn it upside down and squeeze the bottle a little bit. If you see right. it come, if you see anything come out, don't drink that because right, you it means take a open. pen. And put it in there, just that that thin, and somebody can put some stuff in your water, bro. So if you turn it upside down and squeeze it, you start to see it shooting out from different ways, and you haven't cracked that joint. I tell you what, no I, go. I'll just be dehydrated for a few days. John, thank you for calling. <laughs> in. Uh, I, I appreciate homie. you, man. Love you, bro. We got to get to one more call, man. Love you, brother. Take Love care. you too. I'm just I'm just gonna be dehydrated till about Tuesday. <laughs> Uh, I'm I, I'm good. I, I will well, do a mimosa. You still get the OJ. <laughs> it might have. I, I'm just gonna not drink. Uh, that's what it is. All right. Uh, let's get my man E Nice on the phone. We can wrap this up, man, and and get our last takes from Paul. You make me think about D Nice. My name is D Nice. D Nice. I know. I know. E. What's going on, E Nice? What's going on, family? Man, you know, you already know, same thing, different day. Different day, different dollar, bro. Let's get it popping, man. What you want to talk about when it comes to these Niners, man? Because I love your takes, man. And the Niners are on a two-game winning streak. All right, give me one second. Uh, uh, What's it? I'm sorry, John and Dion, right? Who's the two other people? Paul and Dion. Oh, John was on the phone. I like one of them. Hope you heard me crack that one. I had to crack one before I started spotting. <laughs> I, I want everybody to calm down a little bit. I said this, like, you know, how uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers said, relax. Uh-huh. I want to say chill. Chill. Like, I mean, C-H-I-L-L. Chill. Because, I mean, our offense is building today. Mm. Like, we got new pieces. We got uh, we, uh, people's coming back. We're still missing out both two DT starters. So mm-hmm. we got a bad running game where we're not stopping the run good. It's because maybe something like that. You know what I mean? So just keep faithful. Like stay faithful. We got we got all the pieces. Okay. We got the NFC. What I don't think none of them. I ain't gonna say little boys. The men could stop us. You know what I mean? So we just got to get to the Super Bowl. Hopefully Jimmy 
progress. I wanted him to see like the two Kittle craze. One of the one he threw the CMC should have went to Kittle. The one he threw the Kittle should have threw the Kittle about two seconds earlier. So if he get them plays right, yo, we 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 Super Bowl bound. I ain't tell you that now. Yeah, man. I I I we hear you loud and clear. Um, mm. but you know what? I, I feel like is is it not okay for us to be confident? I mean. Jimmy seems pretty confident, so I'm I'm as confident as my quarterback right now. Uh, is it not okay to be confident? Not being cocky, but we we, we kind of stacked, bro. Uh, you want to be confident. You want to say, yo, we got it, but you just got to make it happen. Like, I don't care if you got five A's. Sometimes a B, I mean, it can stop you because it just stops you. We got to make sure we get the right game plan in there and work on it. See, Arizona shouldn't be no problem if – Kyle Mary is still there. You put a spy on him. Please put a spy on him one time, uh, Kyle. And then we'll stop that third and sixteens, third and tens, third and eights, all that little stuff like that. And we keep Mosley, I mean, keep our boy Ward on uh, Hopkins. Hopkins shouldn't get that many yards. I don't care if he is it's, DeAndre Hopkins. It's it's a it's a it's the it's it's not that he'll get. It's it's the it's the production like he'll get a catch here, catch here, catch it. It's the same way Cooper Cup did in week the four, week four, but he didn't get in the end zone. Had 124 yards, didn't get in the end zone. It's just the fact I don't that want to play. I don't want to play Hopkins like that. They get they're gonna it's overwork him. Bit. That's the go to guy. They're gonna overwork him. All right, let's double with with the with, guy, with a bad him go to the with, with a bad hamstring at that. You know he hasn't practiced right because yeah. of his hamstring. Yeah. So yeah. let, let yeah. them overwork him if they want to. He'll be missing for weeks next week, the week after that, the week after that. So let them do what they feel like they need to do. The cool thing is we're going to stop them, period. That's what happens. Right That's here. my we confidence. Put, break him, put straight bricks on that, man. Yeah. And if you have if you have a, a hamstring injury in high altitude, that makes it even worse because you're not getting oxygen to the muscles properly. Ooh, so Charlie horses all the way over through the leg, bro. All the way. Like no joke. And I ain't that mad at uh, Ward playing nickel. I think he's what? one of the best. I ain't, I know I was. Ta- I hear you talking a lot of times. You know I listen to you every day. I know, bro. But I I I got I got to pump the brakes. He's getting, he's, getting, he's getting toasted, but he's getting toasted after the third or fourth second. He ain't getting toasted in the first beginning of the play. Mm-hmm. He's getting, you know the quarterback runs around, then he just had to chase him down, and then he gets roasted. But. He's playing. He's one of the best defenders on our on our team. Hands down. Hands down. Hands down. Hands down. And that's why that's why his ass is out there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why he's out there. When he plays is different. But I I want him there. And he was doing good. He wasn't doing bad. But he was getting toasted because he has some, you know, 95, 92 speed by the sea. Was he chasing behind in the corner? Good point. And that's kind of hard. Good point. But I don't believe in none. Nobody else Arizona got but Hawkins, unless. McCoy or uh, 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 the other boy running. If, other than that, let's stop them. Let's beat them up real bad. I want to put some, you know, both black eyes. Send them to school with both black eyes. I, I said that last week, and man, I was I barely got out of that game last week. I I don't care if we beat them up. No, I, listen, I is nothing more than I want to do, and I'm sure Paul and Dion feel the same way. Is to beat a team down, but for some reason, I just want to. <laughs> I, I, I thought we would beat the hurt chargers down and guys yeah. like DeAndre Carter yeah. and, and, and what's that? Joshua Palmer. Palmer looked mm-hmm. like well, they were going well, to the pro yeah. bowl in the first quarter. So like we should be beating them a little better than we doing, but I think we, we got a gel offensive line. got a gel better. Like, I mean, we doing we good, but they're not doing bad. I so can dig it. And work it. I can dig it. It's a, pro- it's a progression. And I swear to, we gonna get like six or five games win streak, and then we gonna keep put pumping and keep pumping. We gonna beat the Rams, I think. I think we are gonna be getting the lead uh, NFC West. The Rams are done, so, bro. Yeah. So it's all yeah. about it's all about beating the Cardinals and beating the Seahawks. Beating the Hawks. Yeah. We gotta beat the Cardinals here, like Dion said earlier on the show. Then we be, then we become four and zero. Good boy. I need to see you for something. <laughs> uh oh. No, he was talking to somebody else. Oh, I think that's what was happening. That's what I, thought, I need to see you for some. Hey, out there, I need to see you. <laughs> you don't know me, boss. I'm doing it big. Hey, we got Hey, E Nice, man. Thank you for jumping on the show, bro. We appreciate you. <laughs> I love y'all, boy. Love you too, dog. <laughs> oh, 
I will talk to you next time because I forgot what I was about to tell you. I was going to say something. I bet but, you did. I forget what you said. I'm going to my head up. <laughs> it's all good, man. Handle that, bro. Peace out. <laughs> what is going on on earth? I love it. But listen, man, great calls, great segment, great show. Uh, we got a couple of questions we're going to get to, and we're going to st- got the super chat contributions I'll read at the end. Um, a couple of questions. Here's a question from Neil. He says, question, when we make the postseason, I like how he posed this question, too. I'm going to let Paul take this. When we make the postseason, if Trey has a miraculous, has a miraculous by, wait, if Trey has a miraculous Healing recovery? He like, meant to say recovery by then. He just, okay. just, just has, has a miraculous recovery by then. Do you put him back in? Paul, this one's on you. N- Neil's one of the 49 of Faithful UK, so he's, he's cheating a little bit breezy because he's listened to our good. show last night and he's put the question in there. Now, I'm oh, the so you page. already answered this kind of. Uh, okay, we don't so do a live show, we pre record and then let's we give release. it to Dion. Then let's so, give it to Dion because you already know the answer, you got your answer. No, bump that. Let them hear your answer, and then we'll yeah. go with Dion's answer. I was I was going to say, I'm I'm on the same page as Dion. I, I'm a Trey Lance man. I, I'm Trey area all the way. So if we can get Trey back on there, that, that for me would be the answer. But I think, looking at it from Kyle Shanahan's point of view, I think he's said it many a time. He's not putting Trey in there till next season now. So unfortunately, Neil, as much as the majority of us want to see Trey area, I don't think we're going to see it this season. So that's my answer to the question, Breezy. Yeah. <clears throat> I echo Paul's sentiments. You already know me. If Trey is healthy, put him in there, bro. Put him in there. I don't think you can activate him because I believe they put him on like season ending IR. So I don't I don't know the rules and how that works and what you can or cannot do or when you can do things. But he's on our sidelines. He's in the meetings. There is no boot. I don't think so, this is his thing anymore. I, I don't know if you can activate him or not. Like, that's my thing. Like, I because I was sitting there thinking to myself, like, yo, we get into the playoffs, say we make the Super Bowl, but we made the Super Bowl and Jimmy ain't able to do it. Can we activate Trey? Can we bring him back and put him in? Because I can tell you right now, you know, I don't know. You know, we 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 had to figure it out. If he was healthy and if we could activate him and put him in, uh, 130% yes. Why not? I would love to put him in there. You know why? Nobody knows what he's going to do. Nobody knows what he's capable of. You don't have enough film to watch to prepare for him. You know the kid's going to be a little rusty, but at the same time, you know there's still the threat of him running. Um, Hopefully not as much. But, yeah, I definitely would put him in. Definitely. If Trey Lance miraculously recovers, um, would I put him in? Well, I tell you what, I personally would put him in. Um, mm-hmm. And and I think Kyle Shanahan would too, and here's why. He said Trey Lance uh, is done for the year. Mm-hmm. Well, 2022 ends on December 31st. <laughs> I like and it. I like it. I'm just saying, you, you got to pay attention to the words that come out of Kyle Shanahan's mouth. He's very intricate. He said the year. He didn't save the season. They tried to ask him, do you mean for the season? And he kind of gave you this kind of weird, weird response. I'm just saying, I think Kyle would do it too. Because last year, we were screaming for him to put this kid in. Just let him do something different. Like They won't know what's going to hit him. The Rams will be lost in the sauce. And Kyle wasn't having it. It was Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Hurt Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. And I think this year Kyle's going to be like, bump that. It's time to win. It's time to put up or shut up. So you got to do what you got to do. If he miraculously heals and his healing is going well, I say you put him in. Uh, Does that mean start him? (laughs) But that definitely means put him in. Two quarterback packages. I want to see it. Put Trey Lance in. Period. End of discussion. That and and, and the, the great thing about that is is that you give the kid a chance to shine in the right moments. Could you imagine us having a situation? God forbid right now, because we don't need all the all the extra stuff and drama. Uh oh, okay. However, teams are limited to only bringing back eight players from IR. And we've only brought back like what two or three? No, no, no. We brought back enough. I think, <laughs> I think we brought, we brought yeah, pretty good. 
I think we've got yeah. two spaces. Dion. You got two spaces yeah. left, and I think one of them is for him, and the other is for Ken Law. That's just my okay. person. And this is why Armstead, who should have been on there, ain't going on there. Yeah, yeah. After I, spot for Armstead. I honestly, you know, for me, that that I would love it. I mean, could you imagine that young kid going into a Super Bowl and winning? And that's the only game you played all season long outside of the first two. Like, that'd be insane. Like, do you understand what that does for the confidence? And plus, that just makes it so much easier to, you know, say goodbye to Jimmy. Because I can tell you right now, I want to win the Super Bowl. I do. I really do. But when we win, it must be on the back of someone else. It cannot be on the arm of Jimmy Garoppolo. Because if it is, they're going to torture me with four more years of this guy. And it's going to drive me absolutely insane. You have to think about it. Jimmy makes a play. He is a free agent. The 49ers are going to throw the bag at this dude. And look at Trey and go, well, hey, I'm going to for a while. I, bro, I if he, I'm telling you right. We didn't think he was, okay, we, we didn't think he was going to be back this year. He could win the Super Bowl. He, we ain't have no choice this year. Was but, some, saying, but what I'm saying is, we all thought all no, offseason. Yeah, but, but we didn't. We didn't have a motherfucking choice. The, it was not what yeah. the, 31 teams didn't want this motherfucker. I keep trying to tell y'all that no, y'all I keep mean. bypassing the fact that 31. Te- I'm yelling. Yeah. Y'all keep bypassing the fact that 31 other teams said hell no to Jimmy Garoppolo. So Kyle, so John was like, "Yo, man, maybe we could get Jimmy to just come back here for a cool 10 million. Oh, seven million, whatever it was, I can't remember, and and it worked, and so that's why he's back here. He's not back here because they needed him. He's back here because they upgraded their backup quarterback uh, spot for seven million or ten million plus incentives. That's why he's I'm, here. and I'm and I'm on the same exact page with you, Breezy. Close. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not trying to incite anything in you or nothing. No, no, All no, 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 no. You said. That they're gonna offer him the bag. That's Wait, who- uh, if he listen, just just, just, no, no, just hear me out. out. Hear me out. If he wins a Super Bowl, you mean to tell me that as much they glow about Jimmy Garoppolo, they talk about him like he is the greatest thing since sliced bread. John, oh. John does. So does Kyle. So does Jed. You know they do. Don't act like they don't. Breezy, they do. They don't love loving on Jimmy like he the greatest thing in the world. They give him compliments when he don't even deserve it. I, I, I like I like what Jimmy's doing for the team, but he's really do. doing this for himself. I want him gone. I do. You know me. I don't. I'm not. I'm not a Jimmy lover. Long story short, I just feel like if we win the Super Bowl and he winds up anywhere near an MVP. He'll get a big back from some other team because they're gonna be like a free agent Super Bowl quarterback. Now you talk. Yeah, we gotta take that. Now but you talk. I'm, I'm just saying, if I know the Niners and I know John and Kyle, they 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 they'll put some interest into it. They will. I, I don't like it. I don't want it, but it could happen. Cause I I believe I I agree. 31 other teams said hell no. Okay. And if he was that good. There would have been somebody else that would have picked him up. Hopefully, we win the Super Bowl and it's it's all on CMC and we can just let him walk and it is what it is. And I know commentators would be like, oh, my God, you guys let a Super Bowl winning QB walk. You're stupid. It's like, y'all don't ever watch our playoff games. This is why I don't listen to the, to the commentator yeah. people on TV because they always – all they do is say, all he does is win. Oh, he led them to this. He, bro, you ain't never watched our playoff run. Jimmy ain't lead nobody to nothing. But it's what it is. All right, this is not the Jimmy G episode, but it's no. all good. Somehow we tie into that. Dion, do we win this game on Monday Night Football? Yes. Yes, we uh, win this game. Do you have a score prediction for the faithful out there? <sighs> no, honestly, I don't. I usually like to give a score prediction. I expect this team to score at a minimum 30 points. I expect that. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to get it. All right. Uh, Paul? Did you give a score prediction earlier? And if so, can you just give it again? Uh, as there's our brother Lee. There you go, bro. He said 45 14. He yeah. talked about beating the brakes off of him. Yeah. Good loud. That's what I like to see. I'm just curious to know where Paul's coming from with this particular score because Lee says 45 to 14. So Lee's the president, Dion, of the 49 Faithful UK. So he was drinking that Kool Aid before the uh, preview <laughs> show last night because when he dropped that score, we all have to follow that bold prediction. Which, so, uh, which I putting your Kool Aid out there, bro? Because that ain't uh, that's 
That's not regular. <laughs> so I believe it'll be 31 to 14. 31 to 49. To 49ers. I think we're winning this game. I'm on the same page as Dion. Um, but not on the same page as Lee. I'd love Lee to be right. I'd love to be back here on there. Dear God, please let <laughs> Lee be correct. Because that would give me, if that, I don't care. I'll drink all the water. I'll drink the water, the bath water, the tub. I would drink all the water. We score 45 points, bro. And he, al he also called for Nick Bosa to have five sacks on our show last night. So, Oh, he out here with Super Bowl predictions. Those are not regular bowl predictions. That's a Super Bowl prediction. Oh, 25 said 55 to 10. Like, we got some people out here figuring we finna punch the Cardinals in the mouth. The one thing I will remind you of is the Cardinals always give us the hardest time out of any team in this division. We can beat the brakes off of the Rams easily. We can even split with Seattle. That's not a problem. But the Cardinals seem to just be like that. It, it's that itch you can't scratch right in the middle of your back where you like this. Oh, God. And then you over there rubbing up against the wall like this. And somebody's looking at you going, what are you doing? It's like, man, I got I to gotta get that spot. That's what the Cardinals are. It's crazy. Oh, Super Chats aren't working? They should be working. I, I, I'm going to give uh, – I want to make sure I'm saying my Zayel, uh Peterson. I want to make sure I'm saying the name right. So correct me if I'm wrong. But this dope shirt that I'm rocking right now. Let me see. Uh -huh. it says That's fair. Yes, this joint is dope. These are custom designed by him. Oh, uh, hey, man. What's great, bro? Yeah. So they That's have a company dope. out there. So uh, I'll definitely let y'all know how y'all can get these joints. But I tell you right now, this feels good, man. It's got that dry fit feel going. Make my muscles look big. You know there what I'm saying? Go. I'm definitely liking the joints, man. And I like the color. So, you know, I, it's, it's the green. It's my Celtic, Celtic season. You know what I'm saying? So you know how I represent. But shout out to uh, uh, my Zayel, uh Kyle L. Peterson, I want to make sure I'm saying it right. Uh, but the super chat should be working. I got a couple of super chats we're going to get to before we get a, get on up out of here, man. I appreciate you. Um, also, 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 there was something I wanted to point out. Uh, Chase said that on Rombo's show, because <clears throat> I fell asleep last night, that they shouted me out. I, that's what's up. I, whoever shouted me out on Rombo's show, I appreciate it. I'm still trying to get Rombo to jump on here with Breezy. I think that's show. Right. Okay. I'll just, tell, I'll just tell you this. The, re the reason why is because... He feels like he's going to be attacked because a lot of people like he is a staunch Jimmy G supporter. I'm talking yeah, about. I wouldn't let people attack him like that. And that and that that's that's part of the reason he doesn't jump on shows because a lot of people have like tried to get him going, and I think he feels a lot of times like people are going to attack him because he's like an over the top Jimmy G supporter. Like there are times where I've literally watched Jimmy screw up, but it, it's all good. Um, yeah, I'm man. To chicken wings in Mexico. Well, what uh, you got to do is you can't get hot. There ain't no hot sauce in, in, in Mexico. You got to get the tapatio. You got to get the uh, cholula. You know what I'm saying? I'm, say, I'm saying that there's not regular hot sauce. Oh, I see what you're like, saying. I'm not talking about Louisiana. I'm saying you got to get the tapatio. You got to get the cholula. Gotcha. You got to get the sriracha. All that stuff, man. I don't like sriracha, but yeah, I got yeah, you. Hot. Yeah, I, I ain't messing with it. My, my stomach ain't built like that. <laughs> I'll get it in. Listen, Paul, man, I truly appreciate you guys, Paul and Dion, for jumping on. Paul, um, I, I, I truly love, I truly love you, genuinely. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I appreciate what you and 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 the rest of the brothers over there uh, have been doing for me. It's been a rough month, um, but I, I, I owe, I owe you and your and the crew. Uh, much love, much respect. Uh, keep up the great work. Uh, please let me know if there's anything I can do uh, for you. Uh, I got you, bro. I just want you to know that. Uh, and this is not reciprocation. I would just do it, period, point blank, straight up. All right? So just let me know. But uh, let everybody know where they can find you uh, and the days that you guys air, please. Mainly on Twitter, which I'm sure most people are sick of seeing me tweet out. I've been very active, as Dion pointed out in the last year. I can't believe, Dion, it's been a year ago that I did my first ever podcast. I was really nervous, breezy. Didn't think I would ever get the opportunity to come on a show like yours. So when you say, is there anything you can do for me? You're out there supporting what we do. We always feel respected over this side of the pond, the likes of you, Dion. You've always made us feel welcome. I love the game of American football. I love the 49ers, despite never playing a down in my life. I've dabbled with flag <laughs> football, but uh, you know we know how that went, Dion, so I've got to be careful at my age. But no, we, we have two episodes a week. 
the 49er Faithful UK. Anybody wants more information, please just hit me up on the DMs. I run the 49er Faithful UK Twitter account. And in a couple of weeks, my boy Lee Gowland will be out at Levi's and he's going to be hanging with you and Chapman. And I can't wait to see the photograph with you guys with the flag and the president of the Fighting Anna Faithful UK. So thank you for having me on, Breezy. I've had an absolute blast. Anytime. And Dion, let everybody know uh, your your schedule is like me. It just, just pops up whenever. So that's why y'all got to make sure the alerts are on all and set to on like you once you turn it on make sure it has the all not personalized you'll miss out Dion goes live whenever the f- he feels like it so you don't want to miss his shows let him know d yeah hey man it's not a game podcast as you see on the hat right here um on youtube on uh, at swift d on twitter and 49er underscore Dion uh on instagram i usually do my game picks on instagram um yeah, he <laughs> Ron Bowles, He's a fool, man. He's he's a good dude, though. Love I'm not that. gonna lie, man. He he's a good dude. I've I've I used to call into his show consistently. He was like, it was literally this is literally how my thing went. Ronbo and NBN, and I would switch back and forth. Mm-hmm. And then like when I started to I started to lean more towards NBN, and then Breezy branched off and and blew up with the nitty gritty. So I was like, okay. And I try to keep up with everybody because we did. I think we literally have the most content creators out of any franchise in the NFL, period. Or maybe even in sports. I don't think there's. I think it's in content. sports. Yeah, yeah, I don't think there's more content creators in the Niners. But that's me, man. You can catch me. I'll be going live a little bit later today. And Breezy is correct. I do go live whenever I please. It's never a set schedule. I'm always random. Um, but I'm going to work do. with Dion and his consistency. That, yeah, that no, that's, Breezy, that's yeah. Mind. Breezy be out there, man. He be. I'm telling you right now, the crazy thing is he coaches. You know, Breezy. Breezy is a coach at heart because he'll tell me like, "Hey, you need to probably work on this," or, or "Hey, go this route, do that." Hey, work this this way, and this is going to be better for you. Chop this. Like he gives me pointers and tips, and I appreciate everything. Um, so definitely, if anything, man, follow Nitty Gritty because I'll be in the chats. I'll be hanging out. You know, what I'm saying I got to check out the stuff with the UK with Paul. We love our guys from across the pond. There's nothing but love to you guys and uh, nothing but love to Breezy, man. We just want you to be safe while you're out there, bro, and uh, continue to keep, you know, keep going. Kelts, I got to get Kelts on, man. Yo. Kelts seems like a cool dude, and I kid you not, he looked just like my uncle. Yo, he's like the he's like a brother that you you had. You just didn't know he was alive and existed. Right. The right. moment he came on, I just felt like kicking off, kicking back. You let the guy just run his shot. Damn. Like it was so perfect. Counts is the man, man. Counts, you're the man, bro. Yeah. And he, he said he was like shy and he had a little bit of anxiety. He seemed to be really cool. And I like that, man. Kels, keep doing your thing, bro. Woke on a recaps, of course, of course. Um you're all out here, man. That's what I said, bro. Like you just looking at chat, bro. It's, just, it's so much, but breezy, man. Continue to do your thing. I'm glad the channel is popping. Glad you got over that 1K. We got to get you back up to that five. Everybody hit the like, subscribe button, tell a friend to tell a friend, share this, all that good stuff, man, because he works really hard. He does amazing things. This is what Breezy does, you know, on top of him gigging out there. Um, you know, and I always say, man, if I get married, man, I'm gonna call Breezy and be like, yo, bro, I gotta get I'll you out here. I'll, I'll be in on the next flight. Get, get an actual marriage, you know what I'm saying? Full on next thing. Flight, like, look, Breezy coming through. We we gotta set him up nice. I'll do the I'll do the uh the baby face or the Brian McKnight, bro. If you need the engagement song, hit me up, bro. Oh, there it is. oh look, he said the Brian McKnight. What the hell I didn't know about that Brian McKnight? I don't know nothing about that, boy. They don't know nothing about that, but guys, I appreciate y'all coming on. I'm gonna jump off and, and get these super chats popping and so I can get up out of here. This is the first longest show of the Wayne Breezy show. If y'all want to stay, y'all more than welcome. Y'all don't gotta leave. I, I, I ain't, leave. All right, I ain't got nothing popped off. I'm good. Here, here's the thing: I gotta share the story with Rombo because just in case Rombo decides to watch, I want him to know that I respect and love this guy. I remember before Rombo blew up, it was it was it was uh around the Super Bowl. Uh, when we played the Ravens, that's when I knew he was like serious about this stuff. And I wasn't, I was more of a musician and I just was so happy that he called me on to be on the show back then. This was before he had the phone calls in and, and all the stuff he's doing right now. And I knew that moment Rambo was going to be a star just from the sound of his voice. He has one of the greatest 
radio voices of all time. If you just listen to Rombo speak, you're just you're 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 tuned in, right? So I just wanted to give Rombo a super shout out for just being that inkling of a spark that ignited in me to get over like, you know, my humps and things in life to where I'm here and able to do this. And then I got to give credit to NY to the Bay from nothing but Niners. And then obviously Mike and Nick from nothing but Niners and that whole family over there, because without their platform, there's no Wayne breezy. And then, and then I got to give a shout out to my brother, Donnie, who's believed in me from day one, the moment that we met at the pick of the stick game in candlestick park, that, that moment, that moment we connected, the dude has been in the family and I've been in his family ever since. So that's how we date back. And then I can't go without saying and giving flower to these two ladies, uh, Peachy, who is, she runs every, she's the, she just runs it. She just, she's the, she's the person that's running the machine. So shout out to Peachy and then the person that holds it down. And if you want to know why prayers get broken through and all that type of stuff, Miss Debbie, like they're definitely hold it down. I love the family out there. Everybody's doing anything, but behind the scenes, that's what's going on. And everybody out there that's watching you guys um, are the reason why I'm here. And it's just like, I, I, I wanted to continue to just, you know, just give, give a piece of me to you each and every day. So because of you, I'm here. Uh, but that's my story with Rombo, bro. Like we go back, back before he became like this Rombo thing. So I remember, you know what I'm saying? And I'm glad that he's succeeding and doing what it is he loves to do. One day I'll get there slowly, but surely, but it's all good. Uh, and make guys, here's my thing. You can dislike somebody and still find ways to support them because at the end of the day, we're all family. Like, so yeah. whether you want to rock with me or you don't, it's fine. But just tune into a show, hit a like, hit a comment. That I mean, that's the that's the easy that's the easiest way. It doesn't even cost you a thing, it might cost you 30 seconds of your time. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And that's all us content creators ask for. You know, um, whenever you guys are in this chat and I see more people in the chat and I can zone in on people i just want to say hello thank you and i appreciate you because i truly do that's what gets me over anything more than a dollar like that you just being here that's all that matters to me uh mm -hmm. it, 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 i like talking to you like that's what it is um now to get to these i want to get to these super chats before we get up out of here uh listen the the, the channel is is getting is, is, is getting back to being somewhat type of normal. It's a new channel. It's not the old channel. That channel is demonetized. It's gone. I can't get it back. We're not even thinking about it anymore. We have moved forward. I'm no longer trying. That email address has been gone. I can't get it back. YouTube just shut the gate on me on that. So we started over. But thank you to the YouTube Google support team for allowing this channel to now be monetized. I didn't say I was going to thank him on the show, but I'm going to thank him anyway. And for those that are still rocking with us, you got to understand, I was going through hell and high water to reach to talk to somebody. And it just so happened I'm sitting in front of my computer after a long day shows. And there was this chat feature that was never there under my uh, YouTube uh, uh, channel and I clicked on it and somebody responded and that particular person that lady decided to say you know what I, maybe you're telling the truth I'm going to grant you access to monetization on this channel that's why one day we weren't monetized and then the next day we were so it's still working in progress so a lot of the features that we had before just aren't there yet so as far as being able to become a member it's it's in the process I just before the show started it just said, hey, you can have members now. And I'm like, oh, shoot. It's not, it's probably not set up. So guys, it's coming. Just be, you know, you know, just be patient with me. Uh, uh, and like I said, we working behind the scenes to get it popping, all right? Um, so let's get to these Super Chat contributions. And again, I appreciate you guys. There were a few of them we had. Uh, I got a couple of things. Gammon talked early. He called in earlier. Listen, we run a Discord uh, channel. And uh, sometimes it kind of goes dormant because it's really for y'all to communicate. It's just for me to come in and be like, all right, let's see what we're talking about today. It's not me trying to ignite or start something. It's really for you. And it's a safe way to communicate, right? You don't have to worry about being blocked, being this, being that. It's it's really a community. Join the Discord. Gammon is over there running that. Um, and he says, I don't know if this has already uh, been covered. We was talking about the altitude. He says, high altitude will have an effect on our secondary the most. He didn't even say this on the phone. Uh, the 49ers will be forced to play more zone. He did talk about this than man coverage due to exertion. I actually think they should play zone more in this game. Uh, what are your thoughts about this, guys? 
Yeah, I think that's something that we've been doing a lot this season anyway, Breezy. So I think Ryan's is going to... I think he approaches each game differently. He puts his mm-hmm. game plan in place. He looks at everything. And we said it on the 49 FA for UK show. Mooney doesn't travel with D-Hop. I think we, we, we play to our strengths and Mooney doesn't tend to follow. So I think we'll see a lot of zone. I don't know how you feel, Dion, whether I'm going down the wrong uh, rabbit hole with that one. Nah, you, you, you're on top of it. Our, our defense isn't allowing for Mooney to travel with the best receiver and continue to stick with them. So wherever they place D-Hop, he's just going to line up against whoever we have in that spot at that time. I would like Mooney to travel with D-Hop because I feel like it would be better for him to try to work on him and continue to try to shut him down. Um, you know, and I, I say try because there are certain players in this league you can do a lot, but it don't always work. Any man – that can play like DeAndre Hopkins has with the quarterback carousel and still have thousand yard season and double digit touchdowns. Uh, that that dude is unbelievable. So um, I'd like to see it, uh, but I think we do what we've been doing all year: a little bit of man, a little bit of zone. So you'll probably see a mix of both. Um, and the, the the crazy thing is, when I hike, I have a mountain that's literally like not even not a mile from my house, and I can go right to that mountain. And I go up a different path and I can get up to the highest peak and that's almost 1600 feet. Mm. So if you go up there, if you do it right and you go up there continuously and breathe, it will help you. But yeah, it's not a walk in the park on getting that, but I think we should, we, we should probably be a little bit of both. I don't think we're going to do strictly one or the other. Yeah. It's going to definitely be a mixture. It's going to be some blitzing. It's going to be some stuff, but I think under what we've been seeing from the 49ers is more zone due to the, the players that we have uh, because you're asking them to do certain things and certain, and I, I can tell you this, you know, just by looking at some of the film and, and getting some schooling on some of the things that's going down, you can see Diamador Lenore and why he's out there, right? You can see him actually understanding now the concepts of the types of zone that we're running. For example, if you watch last night's episode, Johnny Dell was breaking down palms coverage and you, can see that the 49ers are dropping back two uh safeties they're playing too deep you know about 15 yards off the ball and they're playing like almost like an equally distance so they're they're covering one side of the field depending on what the number two wide receivers are um uh, on the particular offense so that's what that that's how complicated and that was it was so cool because he talked about the complexity of the defense and why paul we don't see samuel womack out there or we won't see Ambry thomas out there and that and, and that's why jimmy ward is playing in the slot he's playing in the slot because he can comprehend and understand the 15 things you got to do in this one coverage that's crazy when it was broken down last night. Guys, go watch the episode, man. Johnny Dell. Shout out to my brother, Johnny Dell. Um, thank you for the contribution game. And I'm going to do the foghorn at the very end because we have uh, enough of them. Sean, this is to you, Dion. He says, Dion Randall was the first dynamic mobile quarterback. Facts. All facts, bro. Like people, this is the, th- this is the thing that I'll say. People <laughs> tend to forget about guys like Randall Cunningham. What? Let me, let me say this real quick. Very heartfelt. Warren Moon, I love you. Nothing but love to Warren Moon. And I don't need to say pause after that and none of that. You know why? Warren Moon went through a lot as an African-American QB just to get into the NFL. That man endured a whole lot of stuff. So people forget guys like that, man. Warren Moon, uh, Doug Williams, first black quarterback to ever win the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Um Randall Cunningham, like all these dudes, they were dudes, they were dudes around before Vic came. So a lot of people look at Vic as like the antithesis of the mobile quarterback. He was different and though. He was a different was, dynamic of it because yeah, Vic because, had, yeah, he had that athleticism that just yes, was, yes, yes. But that's the difference. Like, his yeah, his athleticism blew you away. Mm-hmm. These guys did too, but when he jumped on the field, you were like, what? And then for him to – for a man to come out and openly admit, I ain't studied a dang playbook. I just went out there and played football. And the dude – yes, yes, Vic admitted that openly. He said, I never – when I was with the Falcons, I didn't study no playbook. I just wouldn't have been a 49er. Playbook. You can't you can't learn that playbook. You get no love as a 49er. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't don't play yeah. that. But that's really, 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 really good, really good sentiments on that. And I agree with you guys when it comes to that. Christy, she says, hope you have a blast in Mexico. Breezy Madden this week. Madden, y'all kept me for two. I was going to do Madden at three, two o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> 
So Madden, 2 o'clock p.m. today here, Madden live simulation. I got to get it set up. Man, y'all I've already be... seen it, Breezy, because it's nearly 6 o'clock where I am. So I've, I've already <laughs> seen the <it>, Madden. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him, Paul, that Paul already knows the outcome. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Tanya says, good morning to everyone. Have fun at the game. Be safe, bro. My man, Mizell, came back and said, Mim shirts and site store coming soon. Love, bro. All love. And then Fish Whisperer gave a couple of contributions. Kansas City fan? All right. Okay, I can take it. I, that's what's up. Listen, oh, much yeah, respect. You, Paul. Yeah, Paul, when you coming on the show? Send me an invite, Scott. You know I'm down for it. Hey, that's what I'm talking about, man. Guys, thank y'all so much for tuning in. I got to turn this into a podcast right now. Appreciate you guys. You already know our sponsors. Shout out to Residency. We truly appreciate it. We all have the 49ers winning this game, right? Yes. Just making yes. sure we're still on the same page. Y'all stay up, stay faithful, enjoy the weekend. Be back 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today for the Madden Simulation Challenge. It's 15 minute quarters. I'm going to make sure I select the right playbook. And y'all can't tell me to pick that West Coast shit no more because <laughs> I watched Jimmy Garoppolo run RPOs. And so because of that, we're going to let him do what the game say he's going to do. Y'all can miss me with that. And we out. Love y'all. Stay up, stay faithful. Thanks for watching, y'all. Enjoy the weekend. Please, please enjoy y'all weekend. Peace. Whoops. I forgot about the poll question. I can't find the damn poll question. And then, of course, Sean sends another contribution. My bad. So, look, I tell you what. I'm going to get to Sean's contribution, and then we got to do the poll question. But I think I know the answer to the question. Sean says, is Ben Deho playing for the Cardinals don't like him? I don't even know who you're talking about. If you're talking about D-Hop, he has a hamstring injury. I'm hoping that he does play because I want to beat the best. If he doesn't play, oh, well. Poll question was, who will have the most yak yards? And the majority of the percentage of you guys said it's going to be Brandon Ayuk, Brandon Ayuk. Guys, enjoy y'all weekend. We'll see you back soon. Peace out.